Left fielder, number 16, Jay O'Neill. And we welcome you here in Pendleton, Oregon at BMCC Baseball Field to start off the four-game series, and we'll have a little bit of time called by home plate umpire. And making sure they're ready to go here. So far, the uh, Timberwolves are overall 12 and 14 on the year. They're five and three in conference. First offering is just going to be high on that one for a ball. Yeah. So, and we are underway at 101. Next offering, and on the letters for a strike, making that even the count at one and one. The one one offering. It's up high for a ball. Going to be two balls and one strike. And the two one on the way is outside for a ball, making it three balls and a strike. And for O'Neill coming to us in from Tacoma, Washington, and that is going to be fouled back out of play behind the parking lot. Making it a full count of three balls and two strikes. And here is the payoff pitch by Savage. Swing and a miss. Got him. Strikeout number one for Otho Savage. Rounding second does a hitter, number 18, Lee Souza. It's going to be Lee Souza. First offering from Savage is way outside the plate for a ball. To make it a ball and no strikes on Lee Souza. 1 0 offering. And he hold off the swing. Nearly broke the plane, but it is going to be a ball though, making it two balls and no strikes on Lee Souza. And here is the 2 0 offering. Swing and a mess. 
Making it now two balls and one strike on the Souza. Souza comes to us from Wailuku, Hawaii. I can do it. Okay. <laughs> and that is going to be low on that one for a ball, making it three balls and one strike on to Souza. The three one on the way. Swing and a miss. Full count now, three balls and two strikes on the Souza. And Savage looking for another strikeout. The payoff pitch by Savage. Strike three called, got him. That is back to back strikeouts by Otho Savage. Down in third, second baseman, number 22, Travis Finney. Take a look at Travis Finney. Finney coming to us all the way across from the pond on this one from Melbourne, Australia. And that first offering just high on that one for a ball. Making it one ball and no strikes on to Travis Finney. And the 1 0 offering. Jammed it up a little bit on that one, so that will be a ball. Making it two balls, no strikes on to Travis Finney. And Savage trying to look for the strike. The high fly ball to right, and that is going to be caught by Camp for the third out. Great first inning of work by Oak the Savage. It's a three up, three down for the Yaks as the Yaks nothing and the Timberwolves coming up. For the Timberwolves, center fielder, number 22, Davis Moosey. And we welcome you back to the bottom of the first, though. Brandon Martin with you for this. It's a high fly ball, and that is to right, and that is going to be, that's a fair ball, though. That's going to be down for a base hit. And that is going to be a lead off double for Davis Mosey. Down in second, right fielder, number 21, Evan Kant. And here is Evan Kant. The walk-off winner in that second game of that doubleheader to sweep the Big Ben Vikings in this one. 
Gonna show low, and that is gonna be <laughs> thrown away there, and Mosey's gonna come home and slides at home, and the Timberwolves are on the board first. It is now a one nothing Timberwolves lead. <laughs> And it was going to be a ball to start off in this one. So 1 0 is the count, though, and the 1 0 offering just high on to the strike zone, making it an even count at 1 and 1, it looks like. But. And he 1 1 offering. Grounded right through the forehole for the base hit. So far, Gant is going to get a single. Great start this time for the Timberwolves. And Yakima has a pair. Batting third, first baseman, number 24, Joaquin Velez Buco. And it's going to be Joaquin Velez Buco. First offering. We'll start low as the last move call will hold off his swing. Gonna be a ball. So 1 0 is the count though on the last move call. And the next offering just inside though for a ball is gonna be two balls and no strikes on to the last move call. Who call in this one is doing outstanding for himself. He's currently got a 263 batting average, offering this high on that one for a ball, making it three balls and no strikes on the last we call. On base 371, slugging nearly 400 with no homers and 12 runs batted in. And the last we call thought it was a four pitch walk, but it was not. So is inside on the letters for a strike, making it three balls and one strike though on Velez call. Gant is at first, and it's gonna be grounded to the shortstop and can't make the play on that one, so fielder's everybody's choice. safe. Fielder's choice. And it's gonna be a fielder's choice though for no, Velez Bucal. Fielder's choice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Batting fourth, third baseman. Number two, Caden Boyle. It is going to be Caden Boyle. So far in his sophomore year, though, batting average nearly 260. On base percentage 361, slugging nearly 400. Going to show bunt that time. And will not make the play by the third baseman. Yeah. And everybody's yeah. safe, though. No, buddy out. <laughs> and we're going to have time called by the catcher in Perangela. And they're going to have some discussions on this one. See, they're going to have to uh, make sure to get back on defense somehow. Out, out, out. Batting fifth, left fielder, number three. Chance Oldham! It'll be Chance Oldham. So far, doing outstanding. Batting 317. On base percentage 356. A swing and a miss on that one. Start off with a strike on Oldham. Slugging 415 with no homers and five runs batted in. And. He sets and throws. Now back behind the fencing, making it no balls and two strikes on to Chance Holden. As Linster looking for the strikeout with the 0 2 pitch to Holden. As he sets, and the 0 2 on the way. Strike three called Godman. Strikeout number one for Ty Linster. So it's one out. Yep. 
Batting six, Stephanie Hedder. Number seven, Joe Clifton. That is going to be Joe Clifton. Who will be the designated hitter this first game. First offerings inside low, four ball. Going to be a ball and no strikes on Joe Clifton. Coming to us from Waianae, Hawaii. Got the bases loaded with one out. A 1-0 Timberwolves lead. Next offering is just high on that one for a ball, making it two balls and no strikes on the Clifton. And Linster looking to find the, uh, the strike zone in this one. The next offering is in for a strike right onto the letters. Going to be two balls and one strike, though, on the Clifton. So far, batting 250 in this one. On base 400, also slugging 250 with no homers, just one RBI batted in. And fouled off on the bat of Clifton. It's gonna be two balls and two strikes, so on to Joe Clifton. As Ty Linster looking for another strikeout to, to go with that. And Clifton wants to stay, stay alive in this one at bat. The 2-2 pitch to Clifton. Just inside for a ball. Full count now. Three balls and two strikes on the Joe Clifton. As Linster looking for the strikeout to go for the payoff pitch to Clifton. Foul back behind the fencing behind home plate. Still remains three balls and two strikes on the Clifton. As Clifton's looking for a base hit on this one. And Linster looking for a strikeout. The, the payoff pitch, high fly ball to left on that one. That will drop for a base hit. As will come home by Ganto is now a 2-0 Timberwolves lead. That is going to be a RBI single for Joe Clifton. Down in seventh, shortstop number nine, Noel Romo. Here is Yoel Romo out of Tropic, Utah. And Linster looking to find the strike, and the first offering is low and away for a ball, making it one ball and no strikes on to Yoel Romo. Romo in this one currently batting 221 with the on base percentage 321, slugging only 250 with no homers and nine runs batted in. Next offering high though for a ball, making it two balls and no strikes. On to Yoel Romo. And Lister trying to find his rhythm back into the strike zone, at least somewhere. And a little chopper. He'll throw it at home, though. That's going to be in time. And it's going to go down as a fielder's choice for Romo. So two down now. Down the eight. Catcher. Number 33. Richie Hagan it is going to be Richie Hagan. So far, currently batting 262, on base 380, slugging 357 with one home run and three runs batted in. And that is going to be low inside for a ball. To so start off with a ball and no strikes on the Richie Hagan. Coming to us from Lockport, Illinois. A swing and a miss on that one. To even the count now at one and one on to Hagen. Currently bases loaded once again with now two outs. A two nothing Timberwolves lead. And that is going to be a foul back behind the behind that parking lot once again. It's going to be now one ball and two strikes on Hagen. Lister looking for a strikeout in this one. And the 1-2 offering to Hagen. 
Now back behind the fencing, behind home plate once again. So Hagen will keep the at back going in this one. And still remains one ball, two strikes. Again, Lister looking for a strikeout in this one. The one two offering. Strike three, call, got him. So strikeout number two for. Linster. However, they do put up two runs on the board, though, as the Timberwolves do, and the uh, Yaks, nothing. Go to the top of the second on this one is a 2-0 Timberwolves lead. And look, take a look at the first offering from Savage. A swing and a miss to start off on the Brett Haggerty. Brett Haggerty coming to us from Olympia, Washington, North Thurston High School. And the next offering just a little bit outside and dropped. The ball by Hagen, to even the count at one and one. And Savage making his eighth appearance as eighth start though. Next offering, it's inside and low for ball. Making it now. Two balls and one strike though, on to Haggerty. Swing and a miss. He's gonna go for a hack on that one. Team in the count now at two balls and two strikes on the Haggerty. Savage looking for a strike up the 2-2. Two -two. Way outside of the plate though. Making the full count. Three balls and two strikes on to ha Brett Haggerty. And here is the payoff pitch by Savage to Haggerty. Swing and a miss. Got him. Strikeout number three for Otho Savage. Down in fifth, shortstop number one, Trevin Long. It is going to be Trevin Long. Current come to us from Battleground, Washington. And the first offering. Will be high though and out of the glove of Hagen. Went for that and the baseball went back into the backstop. They get one ball, no strikes. That is gonna be fouled off out of play, right into the prison parking lot. Even the count at one and one on to Trevin Long. And the one-one offering. Just a little bit outside for a ball. Make it now two balls and one strike though on to Long. So far for Long, averaging 232. And that is gonna be in for a strike down to the inside corner. Making it now at two balls and two strikes. And here is the 2-2 pitch. A little grounder and that is gonna be Robo. We'll take a couple steps, throws at the first. That is gonna be in time for the second out. Yeah. 
batting six, right fielder, number seven, Matthew Sove. It's gonna be Matthew Sove in this one. So far for Sove in this one, that is gonna be in for a strike to start off on to Matthew Sove. Batting average 221. On base, 351, slugging 273 with no homers, seven runs batted in. It'll be a grounder. Romo will get there, and that will throw the first. It's in time for the third out. Again, they do go down in short order, though, as the Timberwolves, two, and the Yaks, nothing. Go to the bottom of the second, though, in this one. Still a 2 nothing game. The Timberwolves still hold on to a two-run lead. Next first offering is going to be in for a strike right inside the zone. Making it no balls on the strike, though. On to Logan Williams. Will be Ty Linster, a right-handed pitcher, making his third appearance. His uh, second start, though, a high fly, and that is going to be caught by the right fielder, in Sobe for the first out. Center fielder number 22, Davis Mosey. It is going to be Davis Mosey. A leadoff double last time. And the first pitch offering is going to be low and in for a strike though. Make it no balls and a strike on the Davis Mosey. So far for Mosey in this one, doing outstanding though. Batting average 354. Next offering's low for a ball. Even the count at one and one. On base 420. It's like 434 with no homers and 17 runs batted in. As we ground it right through the six hole for a base hit. So that is going to be a one-out single for Davis Mosey. Right fielder, number 21, Evan Gant. It's going to be Evan Gant. A single last time. And Mosey currently has 21 stolen bases. Currently second in the end whack in stolen bases. First offering slow in the dirt, no four ball. Making it one ball and no strikes on to Evan Gant. Gant doing outstanding, 339 batting average. On base 414, slugging 452. One homer and 12 runs batted in. And that is Gant to get there, and he will not, but he will get the out at first, though. But Mosey will move up to second, though. So it will be two down. First baseman, number 24, Joaquin Velez Bucal. It is going to be Joaquin Velez Bucal, though. Fielder's choice last time he reached there. 
Kosey is at scoring position. And that is going to be grounded right. And what a big play that is. And timing, though. What a timing play that time by the second baseman, Travis Finney, to get the third out. Did you leave the runner? At third, though, as the most new. It will be the top of the third, though, is going to be Vinny Garangela to lead off the seven, eight, nine batters. And that will be a hit by a pitch, though, on to Garangela. So Garangela will go to first, though, with that hit by a pitch. Batting eight, third baseman, number 23, Trayson Hustle. It is going to be Trayson goes to all on that one. For Trayson, this one, he comes to us from Rexburg, Idaho. A swing and a miss to start off, though. Make it no balls and a strike, though, on to Coastal. So far for Coastal for this. And the next offering. In for a strike. Just high in. Making it no balls and two strikes on the coastal. And here is the 0 2 pitch by Savage the Coastal. Grounded. That will be Williams will throw it to for second. And that will be in. That'll be not in time though at first though. But do get the 4 6 in this one by. The Timberwolves, so that is going to be just one out. Batting ninth, center fielder, number 32, Kyle Williamson. It's going to be Kyle Williamson. Coming to us from Las Vegas, Nevada. That first offering just a little bit outside for a ball. Making it one ball, no strikes, on to Williamson. Williamson batting average 247, on base nearly 300. And Postal will be back in time though, from that pickoff attempt. 1-0 offering is a high for ball. Two balls, no strikes, on the Williamson. As mentioned, on base nearly 300, slugging 342 with one home run and 12 runs batted in. Swing and a miss. Now we'll be making it two balls and one strike, though, on to Williamson. Pickoff attempt, though, and Coastal is back in time. Again from that pickoff attempt. And here is the 2 1 off. And another pickoff attempt, but again, Coastal back in time. As Postal looking to extend the lead at first. He actually did not, said first base umpire Greg Mitchell. He did not go on that one, so going to be three balls and one strike, though, on Williamson. And here is the 3 1. 
Swing and a miss. Now making a full count at three balls, two strikes on Williamson. Savage is trying to look for a score strikeout, but however, it will be another pickoff attempt. Again, Coastal is back in time. The payoff pitch by Savage to Williamson. And he actually went on that one, so that is going to be a strikeout. So strikeout number four for Otho Savage. Left fielder, number 16, Jay O'Neill. O'Neill, though, a strikeout victim last time. The first offering, high fly ball to the left, and that is going to be Olden will be making the catch, though, for the third out. They do leave the runner at first, as the Timberwolves do, and the Yaks nothing. We go to the bottom of the third, though. Still a 2 nothing game. The four, five, six batters are up. And it will be Caden Boyle. Reached on an error. It was a sack. So, nothing, no harm for Boyle. So, the start off with a strike. Making it no balls and a strike on the Boyle. And here is the 0-1 offering from Linster. That's going to be outside, though, for a ball. Even the count at one and one. And Boyle will be again heading to Ottawa University, home of the Spirit, in Surprise, Arizona, to continue his collegiate and academic for a baseball. And now it's start again will be low for a ball. This time, two and one is the count. As Linster is trying to look to get his rhythm back, trying to find the strike zone, the 2 1. It's just outside, though. Now make it 3 and 1. On to Caden Boyd. As Linster has to find something to find the strike zone, the 3 1. And he swung on that one and fouled it back. Now a full count. Three balls, two strikes on to Caden Boyle. Linster is looking for a strikeout in this one to start off of the outing for Linster. The payoff pitch by Linster to Boyle. Popped high on that one to right. And that is going to be caught by the right fielder in Sobe for the first out. Left fielder, number three, Chance Oldham. It is going to be Chance Oldham. He struck out victim last time. As Linster looking for the first offering, and that is going to be in for a strike, though. Make it no balls and a strike on the Chance Oldham. 
Oldham from Kennewick, Washington, Kennewick High School, the home of the Lions of the WIAA, and foul the back behind the fencing, behind home plate, making it now no balls and two strikes on Oldham. And Lister looking for a strikeout as the 0-2 pitch to Oldham. And it's low for ball. Making it one ball and two strikes on to Oldham. And going to be Linster looking for the one two pitch. Low on that one, out just outside for a ball. Evens the count at two balls and two strikes on the chance, Oldham. As Linster looking to find the strike zone in this one. Here is the two two pitch. Up high and out of play for foul. And it is going to be remaining at two balls and two strikes on the chance, Oldham. Timberwolves are looking for their fifth straight win to start off the four game series with the Yaks. It's going to be grounded to the shortstop. We'll take a couple steps and throws it to first, and that will be out just barely. Now it's two down. Designated hitter number seven, Joe Clifton. There's going to be Joe Clifton. RBI single last time. And he's looking to keep it going for his hot streak. The first offering is going to be in for a strike on the letters. Going to be no balls and a strike on the Joe Clifton. As... Lencer finally found his rhythm to find the strike. And a grounded foul on that first base side. Making it no balls and two strikes on the Joe Clifton. Lencer looking for the strike to end off the inning. The 0-2 pitch. Strike three called. Got him. Strike at number three for Lencer. And it'll go down in short order though. As the Temple Wolves too, and the Yaks Brad Baker here, taking over in the top of the fourth. Story so far has been Otho Savage on the mound. First pitch is a ball. He's thrown three shutout innings. He's been cruising through the Yaks lineup. Nice day for baseball out here in Pendleton, Oregon. About 66, sunny, no wind. And another pitch for a ball. Souza, the batter, number two hitter. For the Yaks, struck out in his first at bat. Breaking ball in there for a strike. That's a tough pitch. 2-0, usually you go with the fastball. But you throw a breaking ball right there, and it's in there for a strike. The 2-1 from Savage to Souza. Slider off the plate. Souza, DH today. Swung on and missed. Full count now. All right, the, the payoff pitch. 
Swing miss. Another strikeout for Savage to lead off the top of the fourth. That is five Ks. Second baseman number 22, Travis Finney. Brings up Finney. Finney's having a great season for the Yaks, batting 368 heading into the game. Flew out to right in his first inning. The 0 on the way. Breaking ball, swung on, rolled over. That's going to be the six hole, though. Tough hop for Romo. And Finney is on uh, with the E6. That was a tough play for Romo, but it's still considered an error. First baseman number 29, Brett Haggerty. Brings up Haggerty out of North Thurston High School in Olympia, Washington. Capital of the great state of Washington. Breaking ball in the dirt. See how Savage responds to that air. Double plays in order here. Haggerty does have some power. Fastball hit hard, but foul past third base coach Ben Kruger, also the head coach. Haggerty does have three home runs on the year, leading the Yaks. He's a big guy. He's got some size on him. 1-1 one, one count from Savage to Haggerty. Breaking ball in there for a strike. Rick Freitas, home plate umpire. Been umping for a long time. Does a great job. Greg Mitchell at first base. Pickoff move back in time. And third base umpire, Jim Clifford. All three do a very good job. They've been umpiring in the Northwest Athletic Conference for quite some time. The one-two from Savage. to Haggerty. That ball's hit hard, hit high, but it looks like Oldham is there. And he makes the catch for the second out. And Finney will head back to first. Two down. Fourth off, number one, Trevin Long. Brings up Long from Battleground, Washington. Battleground just north of Vancouver, Washington, down there in southwestern Washington. Two outs. Savage comes set. Fastball just high to Long. See if Coach Kruger might uh, send Finney here with two outs. Try to get someone into scoring position with two outs. Savage comes set. He's working quick. The 1 0. He picks off. Back in plenty of time. Van Savage out of Twin Falls, Idaho. Sophomore. 1 0. Runner is going. Fouled on back. And it was just a deke by Finney. But it's fouled back by a broadcast booth for strike one. Evens the count at one ball and one strike. Wolves have two runs in the top of the first. Ooh, good play by Valise Rucal. Savage threw it in the dirt, but he's able to keep it there. He loved to have a first baseman that just scoops everything over there. That way you have more confidence as a pitcher. And your infield throwing over there, getting the ball in the dirt, still making a play. Breaking ball in there for strike two. Two outs, I want, or two strikes, two outs. Won't be surprised if Finney is in motion here. See Savage. Come set. One, two. Fastball fouled back. Savage is coming close to rolling through that. You have to come to a momentary stop real quick in your motion. He's right there. Or else that'll be called a balk. Foul on back. One and two still a count. Savage. I'm set. One, two. Fastball swung on back here. Our fence is taking a pounding in this at bat by Long. He's from Battleground. He sure is battling at the plate. Maybe that's what they do there in Battleground, Washington. No, not much win today. That's a rarity here in the spring in Pendleton. The one, two on the way. Fastball swung on and missed. And that's another K for Savage. That is number six for Savage. And as we head to the top of the fifth inning, Wolves two, Yaks zero.
Start the bottom of the fourth inning. I messed up at the end of the broadcast there, but we're at the bottom of the fourth here. Romo leads off, hits the ball hard. That's going to be a leadoff single at least. McCall goes by the left fielder. He might even be able to get three. Romo's got good speed, but Coach Benson holds him up at second. Never want to make that first out at third base. And Romo is aboard with a leadoff double. Catcher number 33, Richie Hagan. Brings up the left-handed hitter, Hagan here, the catcher. Romo's aboard with the leadoff double. Linster into his fourth inning of work, giving up two. A couple errors in the first inning that gave up the runs. Came into the evening with a six-plus ERA, but has pitched pretty well. Foul ball. In the box, that will be a strike on Hagen. Tried to drag bunt there, fouled it off. Now, if you hit it outside the box, you're actually considered out if it's in fair play. So it's good that he was in the box. That's one strike. Let's see if Coach Benson has Hagen bunt again here. First baseman's playing way back. I don't know what he's doing in that bunt situation. The guy on second, your first baseman's supposed to be in there. Third baseman's in and angled. Now with two strikes, see if Hagen will swing away here. My guess is that he will. Romo gets his lead from second. Linster comes set. Foul on back by Hagen. Hopefully he does not hit the tacos out here. We got tacos for sale out in the parking lot. Big things happening at BMCC. Tacos, live stream, announcing beautiful sunny day. What a day to be here at Blue Mountain Community College. Always a good day to be a Wolf. Two strikes on the way. Hagen pops it up. Looks like we're all oh, they second baseman lost in the sun, but the center fielder makes the routine catch. Sun could be a factor though. That's one out for the Wolves. Second baseman number five, Logan Williams. Brings up Williams, the second baseman, out of LeGrand. Cade in his first at bat. Linster comes set. Breaking ball, nubbed off. That's gonna be a tough play for the second baseman. Takes a bad hop, but he's able to make the play. Good play by the second baseman there. That's Finney, good job there. Two outs. Number 22, center fielder, Davis Mosey. Brings up Mosey. Came into the game batting 354. Also has two hits today, so even raising that average even more. Mosey's been a solid player for the Timberwolves this year. Linster, breaking ball, swung on and missed, low and away. Good first pitch by Linster. Nice little slider there, low and away. Not much you can do with that except go to right field. It means the spin was coming up late because Mosey, I don't think, identified it as a slider until late. The 0-1 off the plate. Evens count at 1-1. Mosey out of Rocky Mountain High School in the Boise area. Always had a quality baseball program. Linster comes set, the 1-1. Hit right at the second baseman now. Looks like it just jammed him or he hit it off the end of the bat. And the Wolves are retired here in the bottom of the fourth this time. As we head to the top of the fifth, for real this time, Wolves two, Yaks zero.
Brings up Sove, the right fielder. Coming in the game, batting 221. Ground out to short in his first at bat. Savage, fastball up. Savage cruising. Four shutout innings so far as we head to the top of the fifth. Works quick. Good rhythm. Fouls it on back. Evens the count at one ball and one strike. One and one. Savage is one one. Change up just slightly off the plate. Not a bad pitch right there to a left handed hitter. Right handed change up to a left handed batter is always a tough pitch to handle. 2 1. There you go. Third base umpire Jim Clifford says no. And that's a 3 1 count. This is a hitter's count for Sova. Savage challenges him with a fastball right down the middle and takes it. Brings it to a full count. Sova out of Grandview. Chain off the plate for a ball four, and that is a leadoff walk. First walk of the game by Savage. Catcher number two, Vinny Carangella. Brings up the catcher, Karen Jella, out of Boise, Idaho, Skyview. Savage, that was his first walk. He's also hit a batter, but been around the zone all day. And the catcher, Karen Jella, swings it first pitch, check swing, but home plate umpire Rick Frottis calls it a strike. The 0 1, Savage, breaking ball in the dirt, blocked by Hagen, keeps it in front. Oh, holds Soba to first base. He said, beautiful day out there, as you can see in the right field camera. And Westgate Apartments, brand new sponsor of your Blue Mountain Timberwolves. Looking for a place to live in Pendleton, check out Westgate Apartments. The 1-1 breaking ball, just inside. And Savage, been working ahead all day. Lead off walk, now down 2-1 to one here. Let's see if he can bounce back. Savage has gone deep into games this season for the Timberwolves, so 2-1. Fastball in there for a strike. Even the count at 2-2. Two two. Let's see if Sova will be in motion here. Karen Jella. Savage picks over. Sova does not get dirty, but he's still back in time. So it's one where you want the guy to slide in, getting back, and if he's not sliding, you want to get a bigger lead there. Fastball fouled off. Well, even the count at two and two. Excuse me, the count was already two and two, so it will stay at two and two. Into the prison parking lot. Plenty of cars out there in the prison. It's a work day, though, for everybody. Wednesday, the 2-2 breaking ball hits him in the back. And the Yaks have a little something going here with runners at first and second, no outs. Coach Wicklander will head to the mound for a visit. Coach Wicklander out of LaGrande, Oregon. Former Wolves pitcher himself back in 2015 and 16. Actually, uh, eight years ago to the day, Coach Wicklander threw a complete game shutout against CBC. I did not do the research on that. I saw it on my Facebook timeline, actually. So, wonder if Coach Wicklander remembers that. I'll have to talk to him about that. Third baseman number 23, Grayson Coastal. Brings in Coastal from Mel, or excuse me, nope. He's from Rexburg, Idaho. First and second. Let's see if he'll bunt. Nope, not. Let's him swing away. Coach Kruger letting the axe swing away here. Coastal hitting 167 on the year, heading into the game with one extra base hit. And Savage gets ahead with the strike. At least we call it in at first for, for the bunt, just in case. Breaking ball swung on a miss. And the Yaks 
Choosing not to bunt here. Move the guys to first and second. Letting them swing away. Two strikes. No balls and two strikes. Savage comes set. Breaking ball off the plate. Tried to extend the zone there. One, two count. Police for call moves back. Behind the base runner now with two strikes. Savage, one, two. Takes a look at the base runners. Breaking ball in the, oh, just down. Just down. He wanted to call it. A questionable call there, but that's all right. That's a tough one. Must have missed just low. Two balls and two strikes. Like I said, home plate umpire does a great job, Rick Freitas. Two, two, fastball swung on and miss. And the X have one down. Center fielder number 32, Kyle Williamson. Brings up Williamson. Hanging in the game, batting 247. Out of Las Vegas, Nevada. He squares the bunt. That's a good drag. Savage. Makes the play and throws the runner out. Great job by Savage to feel this position there. Base runner does move him over, but with two outs, as long as Savage gets this guy, will be out of the inning. Great play by Savage. Number 16, left fielder, Jay O'Neill. Brings up the left-handed hitting O'Neill. Coming into the game, batting 291 with a homer. Great play by Savage. Feeling the bunts can be a difference in the game. Blue Mountain fielded that one in the first inning. Yakima did not. And that's where the runs came into play. It's in that first inning, King Boyle had a quality bunt that was not fielded. Led to a couple runs. Savage down 1-0 here. Let's see if he can get out of his mini jam. At first and second, no outs. Breaking ball down. It's going to be 2-0. Does have a base open. So you can't pitch around it. the left-handed hitting O'Neal here. Savage the 2-0. Off the plate, Hagen drops it. Looked like it was outside anyways, but 3-0 count. Let's see what he'll do to O'Neal. Savage into his fifth innings of work. He's thrown four and two-thirds shutout baseball so far. 3-0 on the way. Throws a breaking ball. It shows he has his big confidence in his breaking ball right now when you throw it 3-0. That means he almost has more confidence throwing his breaking ball for a strike than his fastball, which there's nothing wrong with that. That's how he used to pitch back in the day. Just not as hard as Savage. The 3-1 fastball rolled over to Williams. Oh, oh, and Williams is not able to make the play, and the Yaks score a run. That's going to go as an unearned run. Shoot, we thought Savage... Was out of the inning with that routine ground ball, but Williams got caught in between hops, and the Yaks will score. Number 18, Desi hitter, Lee Souza. Brings up Souza. The DH, number two hitter. Now first and third here. Let's see if Coach Kruger... In his second year as head coach of the Yaks, might put something on. Fastball fouled on back into the prison parking lot. Let's see. A lot of times it's first and third here. There is one strike in the count, though. So first and third, sometimes you try to make some – steal the guy at first, try to get something going. Breaking ball, hit up the middle. Can Mosey make the play? And he does. He's able to retire. So the Wolves still have the lead. But the Yaks do score one in the top of the fifth. And as we head to the bottom of the fifth, Wolves two, Yaks one.
Leading off for the Timberwolves, right fielder, number 21, Evan Gant. Brings up the right fielder, Evan Gant, out of Las Vegas, Nevada. Fastball off the plate for a ball. 1 0. Gant out of Las Vegas, Nevada. Also a pitcher for the Wolves. Well, been pitching game two of the series. Probably pitching game two today. The 1 0 on the way. High chopper to the second baseman. Takes kind of a funny hop, but he's able to make the routine play. And the Wolves have one down. Number 24, first baseman, Joaquin Velez Foucault. Brings up the first baseman, Elise Foucault. He's been hitting the ball well lately. He's 0 for 2 today, though. Had a fielder's choice. Breaking ball in there for a strike. Where the Yaks were not able to get anyone out, though, so led to the Wolves' two-run first inning. Yak scoring one in the top of the fifth, Wolves two in the bottom of the first. That's how we are at our score today. Breaking ball down four ball. One one count to the first baseman, Elise Foucault. Right fielder playing very shallow for the lefty with power here. Breaking ball just down. So two one count to Elise Foucault. He's had another beautiful day in Pendleton, Oregon. 2-1. Lisner's pitch. Outside for ball three. 3-1. Three, Hitters count here for Valise from call. Linster out of Battleground, Washington. A couple players on the axe from Battleground. The 3-1. Fastball ends. Valise from call is on with a walk. Number two, third baseman, Caden Boyle. Brings up Boyle, the third baseman for the Wolves. Boyle came into the game batting 256 with a home run. He had a great sack bun in the first inning where he was able to get on a base. And there was also an error on it, led to the rally. First pitch, fastball for a ball. The 1 0 from Linster to Boyle. Hit hard, but right at the shortstop. 6 4 3 double play to end the inning. Great double play turn by the Yaks there. And as we head to the top of the six, Wolf still two, Yaks one. Brings up Finney here. The second baseman, batting third. Off to a great season. Comes into the game batting 368. The 0 0 inside for a ball. That will be 1 0. Got the train coming in through town. That's always a special feature here at Blue Mountain Community College's baseball field. Savage in there for a strike to even the count at one and one. Savage into a sixth inning of works, giving up one run. It is unearned, though, as both teams have two errors. They say defense is huge. Breaking ball down for a ball. 
both teams runs they've given up are due to errors so play defense things move a lot smoother two and one breaking ball rolled over big hop for boyle he jumps up and gets it throws it across the diamond oh and he says he pulls his foot says he pulled his foot little high throw there for boyle that'll be an e5 it was a tough hop for boyle but the throw was a little high And it looks like Coach Kruger is going to call an offensive conference. You don't see these very often, especially no outs in the sixth inning, but it might be hard to get the signals with the train going across. That ball was just a little high. Took the leash we call off the back. Sven Kruger, he also runs the Cascade Collegiate League. Collegiate Summer Baseball League, where several Wolves, several NY people uh, have played for, and it looks like Rick Frottis is uh, breaking up the conference here. I don't know what's taking so long, where they're going over. And time is... Number 29, first baseman, Brett Haggerty. Brings up Haggerty, power hitter for the Yaks. No outs. Savage comes set. And he hits Haggerty on the first pitch. It's going to be first and second, no outs. The Yaks have a little something going here. Number one, shortstop, Trevin Long. Brings up Long from Battleground, Washington, the shortstop. Let's see if they'll bunt here. Boyles in on the grass, angled. At least we call in on the grass. Let's see if they'll bunt here. Long will show. Foul on back. You always want to have these nice bunts here with first and second, no outs. Train is passed, which helps you communicate on the bunt a little bit better. Breaking ball popped up on the bunt, but it's going to work as a sacrifice. Savage makes the play again to get the out of first base, but that will go down as a sack bunt. And the Acts have runners at third and second, one out. Number seven, right fielder, Matthew Sobe. Brings up Sobe. Left-handed hitting right fielder out of Grandview, Washington. Fastball jammed. Runners are going to have to stay put. Boyle looks back the runner at third and throws across the diamond for it. the second out. That's a big out there for the Wolves. Keeps the runners there. And now there's two outs and Savage attacks this guy out of the inning. Number two, catcher Vinny Carangelo. Brings up Carangelo. Huge out by Savage right there. Got Sova to swing first pitch fastball, jammed him. Breaking ball off the plate for ball one. Just got in on the hands right at Boyle. Base runners were couldn't go anywhere. Boyle looked him back to third. The 1 0 from Savage. Fastball right on the outside corner for a strike. Even to count that. 1 and 1. Well pitched game so far. It usually is in the first game of the series. Each team's usually throwing their ace. The 1-1. One, one. Fastball swung on. Miss. 1-2 count. Let's see if Savage can get out of this mini jam. This would be two innings in a row where he get, could get out of first and second. No outs. Gave up one last inning. The 1-2 on the way. Fastball up. Good take by Karen Jello, the catcher. 2-2. Looked like Savage was trying to extend the zone, get him to chase a fastball there. 2-2 two, two count. I'm going to be surprised to come back with a breaking ball here. 2-2. Two, two. Breaking ball flared. Let's see if that will be caught. Just over the head of Williams. No. Gant throws it home, and two runs are in. Trickles away from Hagen, and Karen Jella will move to second with a two-RBI single. That one was a killer right there. And the Axe now lead 3-2.
Just a little blue single. Brings up a pitch hitter for the Axe. Pitch hitting for the Axe, number 11, Jesse Maziotti. Brings up Maziotti. He's going to hit for Coastal. Maziotti out of Maple Valley, Washington, Tahoma High School. Not a Maserati, a Maziotti. Breaking ball off the plate. And God, that was a killer, that single by Karen Jella. Just a little blue single. Right over the head of Williams and too far to run in for Gant to catch. Hit it where they ain't. Sometimes that works better than hitting it hard. The 1-0 from Savage. Fastball down. It's going to be a 2-0 count. Hitters count for Maziotti. Hopefully Savage can rebound from that. Still just a one-run game, though. Plenty of time. And that was the first hit for the Axe, breaking up the no-hitter. So Savage had a no-hitter. Lost the no-hitter. Lost the lead on that bloop single. Now he's down 3-0. Maziotti, 6'2", 205 pounds. Fastball, that's going to be ball four. Savage walks him on four straight. Savage has been around the zone all day. Brings up Williamson. Hagen's going to go talk to Savage. So hopefully Savage is able to leave it here at 3-2. Good ball game here. Nice weather. Nice crew I'm working with up here. Got a solid crew. Thomas Rudolph working the video. Live stream scoreboard. Number 32 center fielder Kyle Williamson. Brandon Martin. Yeah. PA announcer and play-by-play, -play, innings one through three and seven through nine. The O O. That's gonna be up in the sky. Mosey looks like he's camped under it, and that will be the third out for the Yax. As we head to the bottom of the sixth, the Yax take the lead though with two runs. The Yax lead three to two. As we head to the bottom of the sixth, Chance Oldham will lead things off for the Timberwolves. Hits it high, should be caught by, I don't know, center fielder is gonna make the play though. Looked like they might have lost it in the sun for a bit, but Wolves quickly have one out. Number seven, designated hitter Joe Clifton. Brings up Joe Clifton. 
Left-handed. Hitting DH out of Hawaii. Breaking ball in there for a strike. So Linster gave up two in the first, but it sell down, and he has not given up a run since then. Scattered five hits. Hasn't walked too many. Breaking ball in there for a ball. Clifton so far. Has a K and a sacrifice. 2-0 off the plate. Clifton's up 3-0. Probably be taking the whole way here. Oh, it's actually 2 and one the count. Excuse me. Two balls, one strike. The 2-1 to Clifton from Linzer. Just off the plate. Now it is a 3-1 count. Clifton's got a Count ready to hit here. This is a hitter's count. Let's see if Lisner will challenge him with the fastball. Right fielder playing shallow, which is surprising with the lefty up. The 3-1. Oh, a good swing on it by Clifton. Fouled on back. Linster out of Battleground, Washington. Yaks do have some action in their bullpen. Number 35, Colin Heisel out of Payette, Idaho. And it's ball four, and Clifton is aboard with a walk. Number nine, shorts. All right. One out, brings up Romo. Warwick was warming up for the Timberwolves. We'll see if he comes in in the top of the seventh. Warwick's been our top guy out of the pen so far. And that's going to be a wild pitch. Catcher cannot find it. Clifton's drowning. Oh, he's going to third. He's going to try to third. And he makes it from first to third on the wild pitch. That's huge. Going from first to third on that. Catcher Karen Jello was unable to find the ball. It bounced up high. And that's a two base wild pitch. It's going to bring the axe. They're going to play the infield in here. Try to cut off the run. It's a 1 0 count. One ball, no strikes to the Romo. Breaking ball in there for a strike. So it's a 1-1 one, one count. Yaks choose to have the infield in on the grass. It usually increases the batting average by a, about 100 by the batter. Ground balls go through. Believe your flies make it easy. Breaking ball swung on miss in the dirt. Linster's up one and two. Big out in the game here. See if Romo can put something in play with that infield pulled in. He got a little bit more holes. Just try to put something in, get Clifton home from third. Breaking balls, checks, missed. Ball is in the, oh, throws the first, but Clifton's not able to advance. Romo swings at the ball in the dirt. Karen Jella blocked it, but could not locate the ball, but then does and throws out Romo for the second out. Number 33, catcher Richie Hagan. Brings up Hagan, the left-handed hitting catcher. Let's see if he can get the tying run in here. Linster, like I said, into his sixth inning of work so far. Fastball. Just off the plate. 1-0 count to Hagen. It's been a good ball game. The Wolves had the 2-0 lead, but the Axe have climbed their way back in to take the lead at 3-2. The 1-0. Swung on and missed by Hagen. He was the count at 1-1. Got some cars parked out in right field. Saturday we had 25 mile an hour winds all day. Today the flag is barely blowing. The 1-1 one, one pitch on the way, fouled back by Hagen. And Hagen is down to his last strike. After this half inning, I'll hand it back to Brant Martin. He'll take you the rest of the way. I will be back in game two, innings four through six. Let's see if the Wolves can tie it up here before I give you back to Brant and Martin. The 1-2, Linzer, just off the plate. 2-2 two, two, evens the count on Hagen. Pitching has done well for both sides. Defense has made some mistakes, which have led to most of the runs. The 2-2, two -two, 
Linster, breaking ball just off the plate, trying to go back door there. Did not catch the back door. Now we got a full count. Linster to Hagen. Big out of the game here. Before we probably hand it over to the bullpen is my guess. Linster comes set the payoff pitch. Ooh, fastball right on the edge. Rick Freitas calls it strike three. And as we head to the top of the seventh, Yaks three, Wolves two. And Brad Warren back with you here in the filling of my broadcast partner, Brad Baker. But he will be back with you for the four through six in the second game of that doubleheader. We bring in Nathaniel Ward. Here's the first offering. The show but, and that is going to be a strike. Down and in. Making it no balls and a strike on O'Neill. We started there last time. Low in the dirt though, outside for ball. Even the count at one and one on to, uh, to Jay O'Neill. He flied out along with the strikeout. First part of it, he played left field. Now he moved in to the infield at third base. Way outside on that one of the plate. Making it two balls and one strike on O'Neill. They lost the series against Wenatchee Valley in that one. Losing four straight games in this one. Missed out on the playoffs. And that next offering is a strike. Now making it two balls and two strikes. On to Jay O'Neill. And here is the 2-2 two -two pitch by Warwick. Hit by pitch. So O'Neill will go to first with the hit by a pitch. Just a hitter, number 18, Lee Souza. It's going to be Lee Souza. Lined out last time. And a couple strikeout victims for Souza. And Hunter is at first. That's O'Neill. And the first offering from Warwick. Fouled back behind the fencing. Going to be no balls in the strike, though. On to Souza. And O'Neill extend the lead at first. 
the uh, 01 offering from Ward. Bow back behind the backstop. Once again, down no balls, two strikes on Souza. And Wark is looking for the strikeout to get the first out by the Timberwolves. He and the pickoff attempt, and O'Neill is back in time. And O'Neill extend the lead a bit at first. The 0-2 pitch down low in the dirt four ball. Making it one ball and two strikes on Souza. And for work, outstanding during his relief there. I mean, uh, under one for him on this one. Currently with 12 strikeouts in this one of just five walks. Making his uh, eighth appearance in this one. Here's the one-two pitch. And the pickoff attempt again, O'Neill. We'll get back in time. Beautiful day here in Pendleton, though. Upper 60s. The one-two pitch. Swing and a miss. Got him. Strikeout number one for Nathaniel Ward. Second baseman, number 22, Travis Finney. It's going to be Travis Finney. Reached on an error last time. Currently 0 for 3 in this game. O'Neill extending his lead at first with one out. A pickoff attempt, and O'Neill, no problem on that one. Just getting back in time. And Warwick. Looking for the real first pitch to Finney. Just a little high on that one for a ball. Going to be one ball and no strikes on to Finney. And Ward trying to find his rhythm. And the pickoff attempt, and that is O'Neill back in time. And Finney back into the batter's box. O'Neill extended lead at first. The 1 0 is going to be low for a ball. Two balls, no strikes on the Travis Finney. And Ward trying to find the strike zone. Trying to get at least a strike in there, at least somehow. Outside corner, inside corner, somewhere. Popped high on that one to right center field, and that is going to be nowhere. As Gant couldn't find it, though. And that's going to count it as a base hit, though. As Gant couldn't find the ball on that one, so everybody will move up. First baseman number 29, Brett Haggerty. It's going to be Brett Haggerty. So Finney will get a double. So the runners are now at second and third, though, with one out. A 3-2 ball game. Yaks have still the one run lead. And here is the first offering. Hot way high on that one. And he's going to be in the foul territory. And he makes the catch that time by Velez. Who called. Was nearly getting close into the Yaks dugout. But it's in play for the second out. Short stop number one, Trevin Long. It's going to be Trevin Long. Sack butt last time. And he also had a ground out and a strikeout. Apparently 0 for 2 on the day for him. Here is the first offering. A high fly ball to right. And that will be caught by Gant for the third out. They do lead the runners at second and third though. As the Yaks 3 and the Timberwolves 2.
And they made reach on the fielder's choice. First offering is going to be outside for a ball. Make it one ball, no strikes. Make it number six to be exact for Ty Linster. As Linster is looking to at least to find the strike zone. Rounded foul. Making it even a count at one and one on the last food call. Again, same scenario as the last one. Williams is just 90 feet away from going home. Mosey represents the go ahead run at second at scoring position. High fly ball to left center field. It left and that is going to be over the head of left fielder for a base hit. Williams coming home. Here goes Mosey. Will throw to home and not in time. That is going to be a two RBI double for Joaquin Velez Foucault. Now the Timberwolves retake the lead. Third baseman number two, Caden Boyle. Here is Caden Boyle. Rounded out last time. Currently 0 for 2 in this. Popped out. Reached on an error. It was a sack bunt though, but got away there. And that Velez Foucault will move up to third now. Just 90 feet away from home. It is one ball, no strikes on the Caden Boyle. They're going to have a little bit of a discussion, though, by the catcher, Arangela, and the pitcher, Linster. And that'll be it for the short mound visit there. And going to continue to play. And it is, again, as mentioned, one ball, no strikes on Caden Boyle. And here is the 1 0 offering from Linster to Boyle. Rounded right past the second baseman for a base hit. And Velez Foucault will come home. That's going to be an RBI single for Caden Boyle. Now it's a 5-3 Timberwolves lead. Left field number three, chance, hold on. And we're going to have time called. As we're going to have a discussion, though, by the pitching coach in this one. It's going to be Ryan Eisler. And it looks like he'll be done for the day as we'll get to announce the next pitcher for the Yakima Valley Axe. And we'll keep you right here when we come back.
be in this one. It's going to be uh, Chance Oldham. Currently, it popped up, popped up last time. And he also grounded out a strikeout victim. Currently 0 for 3 in this one. First offering is high for a ball. And bring in Yaks pitcher Colin Heisel. And Heisel coming to us from Payette, Idaho. And the 1 0 offering is up high for a ball. Making it two balls and no strikes on the chance old. Lister didn't do too bad in this one. He pitched six in the third inning. Got himself six Ks. A 2 0 offering. And that's going to be in for a strike. Down and in. Making it two balls and one strike on the chance old. Royal extending lead at first. One out. The 2 1. And got a piece of that one off the bat of Oldham. So be a foul. Going to be now two balls and two strikes on the Oldham. As Heisel looking for the strike to help the cause for the Axe. And the 2 2 pitch by Heisel to the Oldham. Rounded foul, said Greg Mitchell. It was really good though. It was right along the first base side, but just hooked it that way. Just hooked it foul on that one. And Boyle extend the lead at first though. The 2 2 pitch. High fly ball, and that is going to be, that's going to work though. That's a base hit. So a single for Oldham. Designated hitter number seven, Joe Clinton. And they're going to bring in the pinch runner in this one. And that is going to be Eli Duropon. That's running for the Timberwolves, number six, Eli Duropon. Duropon will pitch run for Oldham. So it's going to be Clifton. Walked last time. He had a strikeout victim and an RBI single. First offering. I and in on to the top of the out of the inside corner. Making it no balls and a strike though on the Joe Clifton. Runners at first and second with one out. A 5-3 Timberwolves lead. Got a piece of that one by Clifton and that is going to go foul. Making it now. No balls, two strikes on the Clifton. And here is the 0-2 pitch by Heisel to Clifton. And the 0-2 on the way. Just barely again got a piece of that one. And it's off the catcher's mask of Karangela. Still remains no balls, two strikes. And Heisel again, the 2 2 to Clifton. That is going to be lying to the third baseman. That is going to be this time O'Neill for the second out. Choice stop number nine, Yoel Romo. Here's Yoel Romo. Romo, strike out last time. And the first offering. It's in for a strike. Right into the inside corner on that one, making it no balls and a strike. On the Romo. Strikeout victim last time, as mentioned. He had a double and reached on the field with choice. A one offering is high and outside for a ball. Even the count at one and one on to Yoel Romo. And Heisel 
We'll be set. And the 1-1. One, one. Down low for a ball. Make it two balls and one strike. And Durapon at first. And now the 2-1. Swing and a miss. Now two balls, two strikes. On to Romo. And Heisel looking for the strikeout to end the inning for them. Here's the 2-2 two -two to Romo. And the 2-2 two -two on the way. Popped high on that one to right center field. And that is going to be caught, though, by the right fielder. That is Sobe for the third out. They put up a three spot by the Timberwolves as the Timberwolves five and the Yaks three. We go to the top of the eighth, though. It is a 5-3 Timberwolves lead. And the first pitch offering. He's going to be low and outside for a ball. And defensively for the Timberwolves, going to be Durapon. We'll be at left this time. So the 1-0 offering. Popped high and out of play. Foul. They can even count at 1-1. One one. And... Here is the 1-1 one, one offering from Warwick. Way high on that one for a ball. Two balls and a strike though on to Sobe. And Warwick looking for to find the strike zone. Find his rhythm back. And 2-1. Pop way high on that one. Behind the catcher, and that is going to be caught by Hagen for the first out. Catcher number two, Vinny Carangella. It's going to be Vinny Carangella. Two RBI single last time. Got to get the. The Yaks going to have to find a way to get back in this. High fly ball to right center field. And that is going to be Mosey. will camp it underneath and then makes the catch for the second out. So it's two down. Left fielder number 11, Jesse Maziotti. It is going to be Jesse Maziotti. Walked last time. Came in. First offering is going to be in for a strike right down on the letters. Making it no balls and a strike, though. On to Maziotti. Well, one offering. In for a strike on that one again on the letters. Making it no balls and two strikes on 
Tim Maziani, and here is the 0-2. Grounded, and that is going to be Boyle, so can't make the play. That is going to be a hit, though. So that will be a single. Center fielder number 32, Kyle Williamson. It will be Kyle Williamson. Popped up last time. So far, Maziotti is at first. Two outs. High fly ball to left center field. Tracking it is Mosey. Makes the catch for the third out. They do lead the runner at first, though, as the Timberwolves five and the Yaks three. It is going to be Shay Dore to pinch hit for Hagen. First pitch offering. It's inside for a ball. Making it one ball and no strikes on to Shay Dore. Dore coming to us from Spokane, Washington. And he got the elbow pad on that one. So Dore will get a hit by a pitch, though. And goes to first. Second baseman, number five, Logan Williams. Pitch running for the Timberwolves, number one, Jay Scow. And it's going to be Williams. Be up on this one and gonna have a pinch runner for Jay Dore is gonna be Jay Scow. Now we'll be extending the lead at first, nobody out. And first pitch offered by Heisel. We'll show a strike though, as Williams was showing bunt and backed away. So making no balls in the strike though on the Williams. Scow again, extending lead at first. We'll show bunt. Backing away there by Williams. Just on that one. Even the count at one and one. Williams single last time. He grounded out and popped up. Currently one for three on the day for Williams. Gonna show bunt again. And Scow will get back in time by the throw of Karen Jella. To uh, Haggerty. So two and one is the count. And Isol looking for the strike. The two and one. Backed away on that one again. It was high and then three balls, one strike on Williams. 
as Heisel has to find the strike zone, or else it will be a walk to Williams. So the scout will move up to second. 3 1. Low for a ball as going to be Williams will award the walk. So Scal moves up to first, second, and Williams moving up to first. And they're going to have a little offensive conference there by head coach in the second season, which is Derek Bettison. And I talked to Derek Bettison this one, saying, as a player, when I asked him, when was the last time he made the playoffs? It was back in the sophomore season in 2010 where they made the playoffs and it's been about 14 years since they have been making it to the playoffs and it's going to be a great opportunity for the Timberwolves if they can do it. So it'll be 14 years in the making for the Timberwolves program. And again, a little bit of time, and as going to be catcher Karen Jello along with the pitcher Heisel. Everybody in the infield trying to find a way to get the defensive for the Yaks. And so far, Yaks been struggling. They're currently just nine and twenty in this one, and they've used up their mound visit. Number 22, center fielder, Davis Mosey. Davis Mosey, single last time. He had another single and a double. And three for four for him. Doing outstanding. We'll show but As Mosey going to get there, and that will be an out at first, but everybody will move up. Scow and Williams will go to their respected bases. Number 21, all right, fielder, Evan Gant. It's gonna be Evan Gant. Strikeout victim last time. And result will get a sack bunt though, but still get the out though. So no harm for Rosie. Starts off with the ball though, on to Gant. Grounded out. Two grounded outs and a single. I mean, one for four for Gant. 1 0 offering. Fouled out of play there, right into the parking lot along the third base side. Even the count at 1 and 1. 5 3 is the score though of the Timberwolves. Up by two runs. Iso looking for it to. Get his rhythm back, but 1-1 one, one on the way. Swing and a miss. Now at one ball and two strikes on the Gant. As infield is playing in just a bit there. And same with the, out, the outfield as well. The 1-2 on the way, low and an outside for a ball. Make it even count at two balls and two strikes on to Gant. And Heisel is ready. The 2-2 two -two to Gant. And the 2-2 two -two on the way. Outside for ball. Now making a full count though at three balls and two strikes on the Gant. Heisel looking for the strike. As he trying to get the first strike out. First relief pitching. It's a high fly ball, too. And that is going to be foul on that one. So, everyone will stick around. Still remains a full count. Three balls and two strikes on the Gant. As for Heisel, looking for a strikeout in this one. Again. The runners at second and third. With one out, here is the payoff pitch. Rounded. And we'll throw to first, but the run does come in by Scout. So it'll still be an RBI for Gant. It is now a six 
three. Temple Wolves lead. <laughs> Number 24, first baseman, Joaquin Velez Foucault. And here is Joaquin Velez Foucault. Two RBI double last time. First offering's high for a ball. Making it one ball and no strikes on the Velez call. So far, one for three for him in this one. He had a reach on the his choice. He also... Grounded out, a walk, will be high for a ball. Now two balls, no strikes. And here is the 2-0 offering by Heisel. In for a strike on the upper half. Making it two balls and a strike though on two, Velez Bucal. And Heisel getting back into the groove of things in his pitching repertoire. Down the back behind the parking lot once again. Now it's at two balls and two strikes on the Velez Food Call. And Heisel looking for the strikeout to end the inning for the Yaks. The 2 2 on the way. Inside low for a ball. Full count, three balls and two strikes. On to the list, we call. Heisel looking for the payoff pitch to end the inning for the X. The payoff pitch popped high and out of play foul. Remains three balls, two strikes. Heisel again looking for the strikeout to end the inning. For the Yaks, be up to bat for their final opportunity. That is going to be a piece of that one, but foul the back. So, Lesbu Call will get the at back going in this one. Remains with three balls and two strikes. Heisel again looking for the payoff pitch to Lesbu Call. And the three two on the way. Hit by a pitch. So, Velez Bucal will now go to first with the runners at the corners. Number two, third baseman, Kaden Boyle. And we're going to have time called a little bit by the catcher, Aaron Jella. And a little bit of a short that time, so it is going to be Caden Boyle, RBI single last time. Currently one for three for him in this one. Two out, six three is the score. First offspring is going to be just high on that one for a ball. Make it one ball and no strikes on the Caden Boyle. And here is the 1-0 offering by Heisel to Boyle. High once again. Two balls, no strikes. And Isol trying to find the strike zone, trying to find his rhythm back. Up high once again, and outside for a ball. Now making it three balls, no strikes. Heisel's going to have to find a way to find the strike zone. The 3 0 offering. And it's a four pitch walk on Caden Boyle. So the bases are now loaded and going to have time called by Karen Jella to the Heisel. As while they're on the mound visit, we'll go ahead and take a First look of our one of our sponsors, Rogers Toyota of Hermiston. Rogers Toyota of Hermiston is proud to be your local family-owned Toyota dealership. We've been providing tailored vehicle purchasing, financing, and service assistance to drivers of the northeastern area of Oregon since 2013. 
Looking to purchase a new vehicle? Check out Rogers Toyota of Hermiston, just off North Highway 395. It will be a new picture, as we'll keep you right here for the new picture when we come back. And we're back here once again to bring in new pitcher for the Yaks and Daniel Perez out of Bellevue, Washington, Sammamish High School. This is now loaded with two outs. Now fouled off out of play there. And no balls in the strike though. On to Durapon. So far Durapon not the best of season for him in this one, but. And here is the 0 1 offering. Swing and a miss. Now at no balls and two strikes, so on the Dura Pond. And Perez looking for the 0 2 pitch to Dura Pond, and he'll go ahead and have his one reset. And here is the 0-2 pitch by Perez. And backed away that time by Duropon, so that'll be a ball. One ball and two strikes on the Duropon. And Perez is set, looking for the strikeout. Here is the 1-2 offering. High fly ball and out of play foul. So it remains one ball, two strikes on the Durapon. As Perez is looking to get ready to go. As he sets the one two pitch to Durapon. Down low in the dirt for a ball. They can even count at two balls and two strikes. Durapon batting under 100. On base, 263, slugging over 100, with no homers and just four of the guys batted in. The 2-2 on the way by Perez to Durapon. And he's no, said first base umpire Greg Mitchell. He didn't win on that one, so full count, three balls and two strikes on the Durapon. Perez is again looking for the strikeout to retire the side and lead the Bases loaded. The payoff pitch. Gonna be ball four. And will be a RBI walk as Williams will go to home. And now it's a 7-3. Timberwolves lead. Number seven, designated hitter Joe Clifton. 
Gonna be Joe Clifton. Lined out last time. Got the bases loaded. First offerings high though for a ball. Making it one ball and no strikes on to Joe Clifton. Currently one for still one for three in this afternoon's game. The 1-0 offering just a little bit outside and in for a ball. Now two balls, no strikes on the Clifton. And Perez trying to find the strike zone. Here is the 2-0 offering. Just inside, though. Now it's a three balls and no strikes. And the 3-0 offering by Perez. Now it's going to be a strike, though. Knee high. Now at three balls, one strike. On to Clifton. And Perez trying to find the strike zone. A 3 1 offering. It's outside for ball four. So Clifton will award the RBI walk. And Velez Bucal will go to home. Now an 8 3 Timberwolves lead. Number nine, shortstop Yoel Romo. Here is Yoel Romo. Hopped up last time. Currently one for four in this game. Way outside of Karen Karen Jella. Boyle will come home now a 9-3 Timberwolves lead. Everybody moving up to their respective bases. Now at second and third. It'll be a ball on Romo. And Romo. Romo getting ready to be ready to go here as Perez looking to find the strike zone. The 1 0 offering. Low in the dirt though for a ball. Now two balls, no strikes on to Romo. So far in this one, they are 5 and 3 in conference. And here is the 2 0 offering from Perez. It's going to be in for a strike onto the outside corner. Now, two balls and a strike, though. On to Romo. And here is the 2 1 offering from Perez. Low and just out for a ball. Now, three balls and one strike, though, on to Romo. Perez has been struggling to find the strike zone. The three one on the way. And Romo thought it was ball four, but it'll be a strike though. To the outside corner. Making a full count. Three balls, two strikes. And here is the payoff pitch by Perez to Romo. Fly ball and out of play right into the prison parking lot. Still remains a full count of three balls and two strikes. And Perez to find, trying to find the strike zone. Get, to, get the strike out to finally end the inning. Strike three. Call. Got him. So first strike out for Perez. However, they do put up a four spot for the Timberwolves. Last chance opportunity for the Yaks as the Timberwolves 9 and the Yaks 3.
Last chance opportunity for the Gax, though. It is a 9 to 3 lead, though. Concerning for the Axe, number 21, Peyton Ricard. It's actually not O'Neill. It's actually Ricard will go for the pitch yet, though. The first offering is going to be. Didn't get there that time, and that, that will go down. So Ricard now making it to first, though. Turning for the axe, number five, Jackson Upton. It's going to be Jackson Upton coming to us from Vancouver, Washington. We'll be coming in for Souza. So that was going to be Ricard. We'll get a single out of that. So the first offering. Good for a strike on to the letters. Make it no balls and a strike though on to Upton. Here is the old one offering from Warwick. Barely got a piece of that one, so that'll be a foul. So some changes there defensively for the Timberwolves. Elias is back from that four game suspension that was in Ontario. Then Durapon now at right field, and Mendoza will be catching. So will be no balls and two strikes. As Warwick will be set, looking for the strikeout. Here is the 0-2 pitch. As Mendoza got the ball out of his glove though, but maintains it. We're back in there. One ball, two strikes on the Upton. Ricard at extending lead at first. Nobody out. Got a piece of that one of Upton, so the foul. Remains the same though at one ball and two strikes. So again, Upton will pinch hit for Souza. Here is the one two pitch by Warwick. Down low in the dirt. As Ricard will move up to second, though. So it'll be now two balls and two strikes that time on to Jackson Upton. Ricard is at scoring position, though, with nobody out. A 9 3 Timberwolves lead. Here is the 2 2 offering from Warwick. Swing and a miss. Got him. Strikeout number two for Nathaniel Warwick. So it's one down. Pitching for the axe number three, Tyler Bugby. So another pitcher in this one, and Tyler Bugby coming to us from Seattle, Washington. Now it's one out, and Bugby though, get into the batter's box, get ready to start off. The first pitch offering from Warwick to Bugby. And here he is, swing and a miss. Make it no balls and a strike though on to Tyler Bugby. And Works is set. The old one on the way. Swing and a miss. Now to no balls and two strikes. So on to Bugby. And Wark looking for the sec for the back to back strikeout. To Bugby. And the O2 on the way. That is going to be a flare. 
That is going to be caught that Tom Bain, a spectacular catch by Velez Bucal. Holy cow. Two down. Number 29, first baseman, Brett Haggerty. And here is Haggerty. Their last chance for the Axe. It's two down. The first offering by Warwick. Swing! And we got a piece of that one. So, so it'll still be a strike, though. No balls and strike. On to... Haggerty and for Rhett Haggerty at 6'6", 240 pounds out of Olympia, Washington and here is the 0-1 offering by Warwick down low and in for both now making an even count at 1-1 one one. Warwick Trying to find the strike zone as he's on his way there. Looking for the 1 1 offering to Haggerty. Rounded foul, and what a great play at that time by the third base head coach in his second year. Now he's going to be Ben Kruger. And uh, Haggerty down to his uh, final strike this afternoon. And for the X. Here is the one two pitch by Warwick. Outside and high for a ball. Keep us the count at two balls and two strikes. And here is the two two pitch by Warwick to Haggerty. And the 2-2 two, two on the way. High fly ball to the right center field. That's going back to the wall. That is way out of there. Goodbye, home run. That is a two-run shot for Brett Haggerty. His fourth home run of the year now makes it a 9-5 Timberwolves lead. And that thing was crushed on that one. Right on top of the rocks near close to the train tracks. Start up number one, Trevin Wall. And here is gonna be Trevin Long. Down low in the dirt for a ball. And it's a, as mentioned, a two-run shot by Brett Haggerty, his fourth of the year. Now it's a, a it makes it now a nine-five game. That one was crushed. I mean, again, right on to the top of the rocks, near close to the train tracks. And a little bit of a down visit there by Christian Mendoza. And it's long, as mentioned. And here is the 1 0 offering. That is going to be lined foul on that one. Out of play, though. Make an even count at one and one, though, on the Trevin Long. And Warwick. Getting back into the groove, though, after giving up a home run. The uh, 1-1 one, one on the way. Way high outside the plate for a ball. Going to be now in this one. Again, two balls and a strike, though, on to Long. And Warwick, the 2-1. Down low in the dirt for ball. Three balls and one strike, though, on Long. And Warwick is going to have to find the strike zone this one 
or else he's going to walk long. Here is the 3-1 offering. That's in for a strike down and in. Making it now a full count. Three balls and two strikes. As the last strike by Long and the Yaks. The payoff pitch. Going to be right over the head of Williams. And that is going to fall for a base hit. So the game is not over yet. We keep going. Gonna have time called by Tyson Wicklander. And is gonna have a chat with Nathaniel Warwick. And basically while they're gonna have the mound visit in this one, a local favorite for more than 55 years, Abby's has proudly served the Northwest with toppings to the edge 100% grilled cheese and freshly rolled dough. Proudly serving the Pacific Northwest Pizza for over 50 years. Located on Southgate in Pendleton, Oregon. And Abby's is a proud sponsor of BMCC Athletics. Right fielder number seven, Matthew Solde. It's going to be Matthew Sobe. <laughs> Fouled out last time. Going to find a way for the X to get back in this game. The first pitch offering. High fly ball to the right. And it's going to be Durapon to make the catch for the final out. And that will be the ball game for the first game. As the Timberwolves are now at five in a row, though, over the Yaks with a final of nine to five as we'll be back with you for the start of the second game in about 30 minutes.
Taking off for the Axe, third baseman number 16, Jay O'Neill. And we welcome you to the second game of this doubleheader. As if we have the same two teams is the Yakima Valley Axe and the Blue Mountain Timberwolves. And the first pitch offering from Gant starts off low and outside for a ball. And we are underway for the second game of this doubleheader at 4.08. 1 0 offering will be got a piece of that one and will be foul. Even the count at 1 and 1. Ganton is on the mound though. Played in the right field earlier. That is going to be foul. And out of play though, right into the uh, parking lot. Along that third base side, the 1-2 offering. And that is going to be, it's gonna be, looks like a hit by pitch though. So, O'Neill will go ahead and go to first though. And second, just a hitter, number six, 18, Lee Souza. It's going to be Lee Souza. Went 0 for 4 in that first game. And here is the first pitch offering from Gant. High fly, and that is going to be out of play there for a foul along that first base side. No balls and a strike, though, on to Souza. Now the home plate umpire, Greg Mitchell, will be calling the balls and strikes them. And we're gonna have more baseballs to uh, home plate umpire, Greg Mitchell. And Gant is set with the 0-1 on the way to Souza. Down low, four ball. Making it one ball and one strike, though, on to Souza. Timberwolves are now in sole position of third place in the East Region with that win. They have won now five in the row. Swing and a miss. Making it one ball and two strikes on to Souza. And here is the one-two pitch by Gant to Souza. Low on that one for a ball. Making it two balls and two strikes, so on to Souza. And O'Neill extending lead at first though. The two-two pitch to Souza. High fly and out of play. Foul right into the prison parking lot. Still remains two balls and two strikes. And O'Neill extending his lead at first once again. The 2 2 pitch. Now back behind the fencing, behind home plate. Remains at two balls and two strikes. On to Souza. Gant is looking for a strikeout. And here is, again, the 2-2 pitch to Souza. Rounded right through, and it's going to be Romo, but no play, though. That is going to count as a infield single. For Souza. Down in third. Second baseman, number 22, Travis Finney. It's going to be Travis Finney. Went one for four in that first game. Coming to from all the way from Melbourne, Australia. Runners at first and second, nobody out. The first offering will show butt high and fouled back though. On top of the fencing. And there's no balls in the strike though. As O'Neill and Souza will extend their leads at the respective bases. And here is 
the 0 1 offering from Gant to Finney. We'll strip bunt. And it's way high on that one for a ball. Even as a count at 1 and 1 on to Travis Finney. So far, originally, Finney is up in that leaderboard, though. Now drops to sixth though, behind Mosey. We'll show bunt. And we'll get the out. Oh, it's going to be safe on that one at third. And it looks like they're going to have a, a discussion by Derek Benison. I mean, this was close. I have to say. And did he get... It was... I thought that was going to be a force out. And it's not going to be a force out. So... And with that, everybody is safe. Batting fourth. First baseman number 29, Brett Haggerty. It will be Brett Haggerty. Went one for four in that first game, including a two-run shot, though, in the top of the ninth, though. That is going to be a foul ball. It was a liner, though, but just barely foul. So it's going to be no balls and a strike, though, on to Haggerty. And a plate umpire, Greg Mitchell, getting some more baseballs in his bag. Bases are loaded now with nobody out. The 0 1 offering. Swing and a miss. Now at no balls and two strikes on Haggerty. And Gant is trying to look for the strikeout. Here is the 0 2 pitch to Haggerty. And the 0 2 on the way is down low in the dirt for Blanc. So the last one on Finney, it reached on a fielder's choice, though. And Gant, again, looking for the strikeout in this one. With the 1 2 pitch to Haggerty. Fouled back behind the backstop. Still remains at one ball and two strikes. And for in this one, Evan Gant making his eighth appearance, his eighth start in this one. It's 26 and a two thirds inning. ERA 371. That was just high for a ball. And now making it now at two balls and two strikes. And for Gant in this one, he has 34 strikeouts, 18 walks in this one. As Gant is set for the strikeout, the 2 2 pitch. Line! He is out! It's a double play! Wow! Holy cow! What a play that time by Williams! Oh my word! Holy Toledo! Batting fifth, shortstop number one, Trevin Long. It's gonna be Trevin Long. And here is the first offering from Gant. Low in the dirt, low for a ball. Making it now at one ball and no strikes, so on to Trevin Long. One for four in that first game, though. He only had a single. And here is the 1 0 on the way by Gant. That's in for a strike down and in. Even the count at one and one. And Gant is getting back to into his rhythm. The 1-1 one, one offering. Down low in the dirt though for a ball. Going to be two balls and a strike though on to Trevin Long. And 
Gant looking to find the strike zone in this one. The 2-1 on the way. Fouled off back out of play. Now the two balls and two strikes on the long. Gant is looking for the strikeout to retire the side for the for the Timberwolves. On for the Axe. And Gantz, 2-2 two, two on the way, too long. And the 2-2 two, two on the way. And that is low for a ball. Full count now. Three balls, two strikes. Great, great blocking that time there by Mendoza. And here comes Gant with the payoff pitch to long. And the 3-2 on the way. This is just going to be high for a ball. So a walk on long. So bases again are now loaded once more. Batting six. Right fielder number 21, Peyton Ricard. It is going to be Peyton Ricard. Ricard comes to us from Kennewick, Washington. And here is the first pitch offering. Hit by pitch. Ricard will go for the hit by pitch RBI. And the Yakima Valley Yaks are on the board first, though. So it is now 1 0 Yaks lead. And time is going to be called by pitching coach Tyson Wicklander. As well, they're currently on for a mound visit, though. As visit Wild Horse today and play over 1,100 of the hottest new slots and some traditional favorites, come stay and play while enjoying true Vegas-style gaming, slots, poker, and be sure to check out the brand new Cineplex and the food court, along with the brand new bowling alley as well. Six miles east of Pendleton, be sure to plan your visit to Wild Horse Resort and Casino, a proud sponsor of BMCC Athletics. Starting seven left fielder number 11, Jesse, Jesse Maziati. It is going to be Jesse Maziati on that one. There's the. It's a up high on that one to the right, and it's going to go out of play. It is a no balls on the strike, though, on to Maziati. And everybody getting back in their positions there by the defense of the Timberwolves. And Gant is set, and the 0 1 on the way. High fly ball to right center to right in this one. It's going to be caught by the right fielder in Oldham for the third out. They do put up a run on the board for the Yaks as we go to the bottom of the first as the Yaks won and the Timberwolves coming up.
As we go to the bottom of the first, though, Brad Barn back with you here. Mosey will lead it off. That first offer is outside of, of the plate for a ball. One ball and no strikes. And on the mound is going to be a left-handed pitcher, Nicholas McDaniel for the Yaks out of Meridian, Idaho. A 1 0 offering. Popped high on that one. And it's going to be caught, though, by the first baseman in for the first out in Haggerty. Now in second, third baseman, number five, Logan Williams. It is going to be Logan Williams. And McDaniel is set, the first pitch. And that is going to be high on that one as Williams thought he went on that one by home plate umpire Greg Mitchell, but he did not. So it'll be a ball. 1 0 offering. Outside on that one for a ball. Now two balls and no strikes on to Logan Williams. And the 2 0 on the way. That is going to be good for a base hit. That is a one out single for Logan Williams. Batting third, first baseman, number 24, Joaquin Velez Bucal. Here is Joaquin Velez Bucal with one for three in that first game. And a pickoff attempt though, but Williams will get back in time. You got the time run now at first though. The first pitch offering from McDaniel. In for a strike though on the letters. Making it no balls and a strike though on to Velez Foucault. The McDaniel set the 0-1 offering. Hit by pitch though. It would have been way outside of the plate either way. So Velez Foucault will now award with the hit by pitch for to go to first base. Batting fourth, designated hitter, number two, Caden Boyle. It's going to be Caden Boyle. Went one for three in that first game, though. Now you got the go-ahead run at first, though. Time run is at scoring position. Way outside. Everybody's going to move up by Williams and Velez, who call the second and third. Now... Williams moves up just 90 feet away from tying the game. And you got the go-ahead run, which is Velez call at scoring position, which is the go-ahead run. So starts off with the ball, though, on Boyle. And McDaniel is set. And the 1-0 offering from McMahon is going to have time called, though, as Boyle gets some time on that one and steps back into the batter's box. McDaniel is set, the 1-0 offering. Swing and a miss. He does a count up at 1-1, one one, though, on to Caden Boyle. And here is the 1-1 one, one on the way. Outside for a ball. Two balls and one strike, though, on the Caden Boyle. Timberwolves wants to go for the sweep here to have momentum in Yakima this coming Saturday. Low for a ball. Now at three balls and one strike on Boyle. And the on-deck circle coming up is going to be a Chance Oldham. And here is the 3-1 on the way. Way outside for a ball. So a walk by Boyle. So the bases are now loaded. Batting fifth, right fielder, number three, 
Chance Oldham. Here's Chance Oldham. Went one for four in that first game. Put in a single. At least wants to get at least a base hit to tie the game. At least take the lead. That's going to be right through the sixth hole for a base hit. Williams is coming home. Everybody's going to stick around, and we got ourselves a tie ball game. That is going to be an RBI single for Chance Oldham. Downing six, shortstop, number nine, Yoel Rumbo. Here is Yoel Rumbo. Went one for five in that first game. Had a double. The first pitch offerings way outside for a ball. Making it now one ball and no strikes on to Yoel Rumbo. Time is called though by pitching coach of the Yakima Valley Axe in Ryan Eisler. And going to have a little bit of a mounds visit to talk to McDaniel as in this one he, he's going to have to be real careful though in order to not let them get more hits off from the Timberwolves you know they got to play more defense and that's the, basically the key thing for the Axe and it looks like the They'll end the mound visit there of Ryan Eisler. And we'll go ahead and resume play there. So using up the first mound visit. So 1-0 is the count. And here is the 1-0 offering from McDaniel to Romo. And here it is. Swing and a miss. He was a count up at one and one on Romo. And here is the one one offering from McDaniel. That's in for a strike. That was, that was a nasty one, making it a ball and two strikes. Here's the one two pitch by McDaniel to Romo. As he sets, the one, two on the way. Outside for ball. Two balls and two strikes. On to Yoel Romo. And uh, McDaniel trying to find to get Lisa strike. Here's a two, two pitch. Foul back behind. And out of play. Still remains the count at two balls and two strikes. On to Yoel Romo. And McDaniel set again. The 2 2 on the way. That is going to be caught, though, by the shortstop in long for the second out. Down in seventh, left fielder, number eight, Kaylin Larkin. Going to be Kalen Larkin. Gets a first start, though, in this second game of the doubleheader. The first pitch offering. And it's in for a strike, though, in the strike zone. Making it no balls and a strike, though, on to Kalen Larkin. Larkin coming to us from Las Vegas, Nevada, Spring Valley High School. No one on the way. Up high and in for a ball. Evens the count now at one ball and one strike on the Larkin. And McDaniel is set with the 1-1. One, one. Ducks that time by Larkin. So it's going to be a ball. Now at two balls and one strike. So far for Larkin's stats there. 355 batting average. On base 412. Slugging 355. Up high on that one for a ball. Three balls and no, one strike, though, on the Larkin. With no homers and just three runs batted in. The 3 1 offering from McDaniel. Hit by pitch, though. 
It will be an RBI, though. And the Timberwolves have taken the lead. Now a 2-1 Timberwolves lead. Batting eight, catcher, number 20, Christian Mendoza. Christian Mendoza will get the start in the second game. And here is the first pitch offering. Swing and a miss. Make it no balls in the strike, though, on uh, Mendoza. So far batting just 200. On base, nearly 300, slugging just 244 with no homers and just an RBI batted in. That's in for a strike, though. Down and in. On to the knees. Now at no balls and two strikes on Mendoza. Here's the 0-2 pitch by McDaniel to Mendoza. Grounded. It will take it at the third, though, and... He is going to be out at third, but they do put up two runs on the board for the Timberwolves. As the Timberwolves two and the Yaks one. As Evan Gant is back out for another inning for his pitching. Here is the first pitch offering from Gant. It's your butt. That's just going to be just outside, though, for ball. Making it one ball and no strikes, though, on. Next offering is outside for ball. Now at two balls and no strikes on. Karangela. Karangela in this one. He went one for two in that first game. The 2 0 on the way. In for a strike. And with that fastball, though, the uh, 2 1 on the way there by Gant. And that was down low, and that was a fastball. Three balls and one strike. On to Garangela. Gantz has to find the strike zone or else he'll walk Garangela to start off the inning. A 3 1 on the way. High fly ball, and that is going to get fouled out of play. Now making the full count at three balls and two strikes on Garangela. 
And here is the payoff pitch by Get to Karangela. I fly it again out of play right over to the present parking lot. Everybody, again, everybody's working there on a weekday. Start off with the big week. And Karen Jell will go to first now. So it's nobody out. So we'll get toward the walk. Starting ninth, center fielder number 32, Kyle Williamson. It's going to be Kyle Williamson. Went 0 for 3 in that first game. Got the time run at first, though. Nobody out. And it was off the bat of Williamson, so that is going to be a foul ball. No balls in the strike, though, on to Williamson. And Gant is set with the 0 1 on the way. Low in the dirt, though, for a ball. Evens the count at 1 and 1. And we take a look at the uh, scoreboard, though, as. Well, while beating Treasure Valley 9 to 1, Lane beating Mount Hood in the final 11 innings that was rescheduled on April 4th. But foul will throw the first. That is going to be in time, though. But, however, that will be a sack bunt as Carangela will go move to second. Third baseman number 16, Jay O'Neill. It's going to be Jay O'Neill. If I pitch last time, as Gant is set. And a great block that time by Mendoza. For a ball. Making it one ball and no strikes. And you got the time run at scoring position. Here is the 1 0 on the way. Up high for ball. Making it two balls and no strikes. On to Jay O'Neill. If I pitch last time, as mentioned. And here is the 2 0 offering from Gant to O'Neill. And here he is. And for a strike. Making it now at two balls and one strike, though, on O'Neill. As Gant is finding back his rhythm. Trying to go for another strike. East inside. Or probably inside, outside corners. Foul back behind the fencing. Behind home plate. Now making it two balls and two strikes, though. On to O'Neill. As Gant is ready for the 2 2 pitch to O'Neill. As Gant sets. And the, and looking back at second, the 2 2 on the way. That is going to be right up the gap for a base hit. Runner will come home, and that is going to be Karangela. And the, we got ourselves another tie ball game. It is a 2 2 tie. Aubrey Eye single for O'Neill. Does I hear number 18, Lee Souza? It is going to be Lee Souza. A single last time. Now I got the uh, go ahead run at first with one out, the first offering. In for a strike down on the knees. Making it no balls in the strike, though, on to Lee Souza. And O'Neill just to extend the lead a bit there. And we'll throw it. And that is going to be out oh, that second. Getting picked off on that one. So it's two down. As Mendoza showing up. The uh, signal to everybody for two outs. So Neil gets picked off. The 
That is going to be a hit by a pitch, though. So Souza will move, go to first, though, for the potential go ahead run. Second baseman number 22, Travis Finney. It is going to be Travis Finney. Went on to reach on the fielder's choice last time. And Souza extending the lead at first. The first pitch offering is going to be away that time of Mendoza. And Souza will move up to second, though. So it starts with a ball and no strikes. And he is now at scoring position with two outs. A tie ball game, though, at two apiece. And camp is set. The 1-0 offering. Fouled back. And goes out of play there, right into the prison parking lot. He was the count up at 1-1 one one on to Travis Finney. And the Timberwolves will go on the road this coming Saturday to wrap up the series with the Yaks at Parker Ball and Field in Yakima, Washington. Great block that time by Mendoza. So it'll be low in the dirt, though, for a ball. Going to be at two balls and one strike, though, on to Travis Finney. Spokane getting the first win, getting the win over to Columbia Basin, 7-2. And Gant's next offering to Finney. Rounded. That'll be Romo. We'll take a couple steps. Throws in the first. That's in time for the third out. They do put up a run on the board for the Yaks as we got ourselves a tie ball game as the Timberwolves 2 and the Yaks 2. We go to the bottom of the second, though. Tie ball game at two apiece. Up high, and that is going to be playable, and cannot make the play there by Aaron Jell on that one. That's going to be a foul. Gonna be no balls and a strike, though, on to Hunter Hollifield. And Hollifield in this one. Has, has did play there in this one. He's two for six in the series against, against the Big Ben Vikings. The 0-1 offering nearly hit the kneecaps of Hallfield, though. So that is going to be a ball. Even the count at 1-1. One and, one. and the 1-1 one, one on the way. Swing and a miss. 
Now at one ball and two strikes. Hall of Field, batting 244, on base 262, slugging 244, no homers, and just two runs batted in. That's going to be a fly, and that is going to be fouled out of play right into the prison parking lot. It is that still remains one ball, two strikes. And the one two pitch outside for a ball. That's now it's going to be at two balls and two strikes. And McDaniel trying to find at least get a strike down in this one. Here is the 2 2 pitch. Rounded to the third baseman and will throw the first. That is going to be in time. Barely, barely got there, so that's going to be one out. Maybe not. Center fielder number 22, Davis Mosey. Here is Davis Mosey. Popped up last time. Currently in this one. Right now, and that's going to be offering this outside for a ball. One of those to count. Mosey, top five though in the batting average though with 369. 1 0 on the way. We'll, we'll bunt, and that is going to be a foul. So make an even count at 1 and 1 though. Mosey doing it. Did an outstanding job in that first game. He had a couple singles, he had a double in this one. And Mosey back into the batter's box. McDaniels 1 1 on the way to Mosey. And the pitch. Outside for a ball. Make it two balls and a strike though on to Davis Mosey. And Mosey is has 21 stolen bases, just four away from Tyne Hermanson of Centralia for the lead. Next offering is low in the dirt though for a ball. Making it three balls and a strike though on to Mosey. And McDaniel needs to find the strike zone and the three one on the way outside for a ball four so Mosey will award the walk and now you'll be the go ahead run third baseman number five Logan Williams it is going to be Logan Williams Mosey extends a little bit of a lead there at first and a pickoff attempt there. And Mosey will be back in time. So McDaniel in this one. And Mosey stand the lead at first. First offering is it's inside for a strike on the letters. It's no balls at the strike on the Logan Williams. Williams singled last time. As McDaniel is set once again, the 0-1 stolen base attempt there, and he'll still will stay at second though, and not going to third, but that will count though. And it was off the glove of Herangela. Now making it. And so it's a stolen base. Now make it number 22 on the season for Davis Mosey, as in number 22. So it's going to be a ball, though. Two balls and one strike. Now just needing three away from Hermanson. And Mosey is now at the scoring position at second. Mosey. That is going to be a strike, though, right on the letters. Now at two balls and two strikes on to Logan Williams. McDaniel is set. The 2-2 pitch to Williams. And the 2-2 on the way. Fouled back as Mosey was attempted to steal third. But Mosey has to go back, though, because of the foul ball by Logan Williams.
And McDaniel is set once again. The 2-2 to -two, two Williams. The 2-2 two -two on the way. Just a bit in on that one for a ball. Make it a full count. Three balls and two strikes. On to Logan Williams. As going to be McDaniel set for the payoff pitch to Williams. And it's going to be ball four, though. Williams will award the walk. So back to back walks by McDaniel. First baseman number 24, Joaquin Velez Bucal. Here is Joaquin Velez Bucal, hit by a pitch last time. Here is the first pitch offering. Mosey will attempt, and that is going to be a hit by a pitch. It would have not mattered. So with that, as Velez Bucal will now go to first. Going to have time called, though, by catcher Jarangela. And talking to McDaniel. And looks like warming up in the bullpen and was warming up. He is still throwing on that is going to be Jay Scow, though. As we'll get to talk to him about more on the Jay Scow once he gets on to the mound. Designated hitter number two, Caden Boyle. And it's Caden Boyle, and he's about ready to go out after this inning. So bases are now loaded with one out. Mosey just 90 feet away from home to retake the lead once again. The first pitch offering. That is going to be a ball, though. Damned inside. Making it one ball. No strikes on the Caden Boyle. Boyle walked last time. As McDaniel is set. The 1-0. Outside low for a ball. Now it's at two balls and no strikes. So two balls and no strikes though on two boil. That is gonna be low for three balls now and no strikes. McDaniels is having trouble finding the strike zone. He's gonna have to find it somehow with a 3-0 offering. Outside for ball four. He pitch on four straight pitches to Oil. So we'll ward the RBI walk. Now the Timberwolves have to be taking the lead. Right fielder number three, Chan Soldom. Chan Soldom. RBI single last time. Still got the bases loaded. First offerings outside for a ball. Making it one ball and no strikes on the Chan Soldom. And Oldham can at least get a base hit in this one. Offerings is going to be high for a ball. Make it two balls and no strikes. And the Timberwolves win this game here. They'll sweep it home. They'll have the momentum going into this coming Saturday. That's going to be in for a strike, though. To the outside corner. Going to be now two balls and one strike. On to Oldham. As McDaniel is set. The 2-1 on the way. Then for a strike inside corner on that one. Now at two balls and two strikes on the chance Oldham. And here is the 2-2 pitch by McDaniel to Oldham. High fly ball to right to left on that one. And it's going to be caught though by the left fielder in Maziati. However, Williams will come in the score, though, and that is going to be a sack fly RBI for Oldham. Now making the 4 2 ball game. 
Number nine, short stop, Yoel Rumbo. It's gonna be Yoel Rumbo. And the first pitch offering from McDaniel. It's up high for a ball. Now it's at one ball and no strikes on to Yoel Romo. Lined out last time. And here is the 1-0 offering. Down low in the dirt, low for a ball. Now at two balls and no strikes on to Romo. 4-2 is the score. The Timberwolves have retaken the lead. And here is the 2-0 offering from McDaniel. Popped high and out of play for a foul. Making it now two balls and one strike on to Romo. Wenatchee Valley beating Big Ben to the one. And here is the 2-1 offering. And for a strike. Down and in. Mix it now at two balls and two strikes on to Romo. And here is the 2 2 pitch by McDaniel to Romo. And the 2 2 on the way. He got him. He went on that one. So, strikeout number one for McDaniel. As the Timberwolves put two runs on the board, though, in this one. As the Timberwolves four and the Yaks two. We go to the top of the third in this one. A Timberwolves retakes the lead of four of the two. Bring in new pitcher for the Timberwolves in Jay Scout. First offering is a strike down on the knees. At currently at no balls and one strike on the Haggerty. Fouled back behind the fencing. Now at no balls and two strikes on the Haggerty. Scout coming to us from LaGrand, Oregon, the home of the Tigers in the 4A OSAA. Twing and a miss. He got him. That is strikeout number one for Jay Scout. Shortstop number one, Trevin Long. It is going to be Trevin Long. He walked last time. First offering is going to be low for a ball, though. It's going to be a ball and no strikes on the Trevin Long. And here is the 1 0 offering from Scow. That is going to be a line. That is going to be down for a base hit. So that will be a one out single for Trevin Long. Right fielder number 21, Peyton Ricard. 
It's going to be Peyton Ricard. Hit by it. Pitch RBI last time. Got at least one of the got the runner is at. That is going to be lined foul. Right to the on oh, outside of the third base line. It's now no balls in the strike though on to Peyton Ricard. Scout is set, looking for a strike in this one. A pickoff attempt, and Long will get back in time. And Scout set, Ricard back into the batter's box as Scout looking back at first. The 0-1 on the way, and that is grounded foul. Nearly just foul on that one. Now at no balls and two strikes on to Peyton Ricard. As Scow is set, the 0-2 pitch to Ricard. As Scow sets, and the 0-2 on the way. High fly ball to right left center, and that is gonna be caught by Davis Mosey for the second out. Left fielder number 11, Jesse Maziati. It is going to be Jesse Maziati on that one. Fly out last time. And look out, though, as Maziati ducks on that one. Going to be a ball and no strikes, though. As Long still at first, though, extending the lead. And for a strike. Down and in. To even the count up at one and one. And Scow is set. The one one on the way. A little chopper. That is going to be Williams will throw the first. That is going to be in time for the. Third out. They do leave the runner on at first, though, as the Timberwolves four and the Yaks two. We go to the bottom of the third here in this one. A 4-2 Timberwolves lead. And this will be my last one before I hand over to my broadcast partner, Brad Baker. Popped high on that one to left center field. That is going to be camping underneath. That is going to be the center fielder in Williamson for the first out. Catcher number 20, Christian Mendelssohn. And it's going to be Mendoza. Grounded that last time. First offerings high for a ball. Making it a ball and no strikes, though. 
on to Mendoza. Coming to us from Austin, Texas. Here is the 1 0 offering. We ground it to the shortstop. We'll take a couple steps. Throws the first. That is going to be in time for the second out. Second baseman, number zero, Hunter Hollowfield. And it is going to be Hunter Hollowfield. Currently 0 for 1 in that second game now. With two down. First offering is going to be a strike. Down and in. Onto the corner. Grounded that last time, though. Next offering is just low and four ball. Even the count at, at one and one. And here is the one one offering there by McDaniel. It's outside for a ball. Two balls and a strike though. And first base coach Zach Kimmer. That's it for a strike, though. Now making it two balls and two strikes on Hunter Hall of Field. And Derek Benison at third base hit. And here is the 2 2 pitch by McDaniel to Hall of Field. A high fly ball to left center field. That is going to be caught by the left fielder in Maziotti for the third out. They go down in short order, though, as. The Timberwolves four and the uh, Yaks two. Brings up Karen Jell to lead off the top of the fourth. Brad Baker with you here at BMCC Baseball Field. Scow's first pitch in their fourth ball. Now the first game, very well pitched by both starters. Today, a little bit different, a little bit more wild in game two here. Scow swung on, hits a Williams at third base, and he makes the routine play for the first out. Center fielder, number 32, Kyle Williamson. Brings up Williamson out of Las Vegas, Nevada. We have quality Vegas-style casino right here in town, Wild Horse Resort and Casino. Scow's first pitch, breaking ball, in there for a ball. Scow out of LaGrande, Oregon. Have three players on the team from LaGrande, Oregon, including pitching coach Tyson Wicklander. Fastball swung on and fouled back over the broadcast booth, even the count at one and one. Nice day here in Pendleton, Oregon. Mid 60s, slight breeze, very nice. Change up, up high, two one count. Evan Gant was the starter for the Timberwolves. 
Made it two innings before he brought in Jay Scow. Scow with a good changeup right there. He's not afraid to throw his changeup at any count to any batter. Just gets a lot of a lot of people out in front with that changeup. Very nice. High chopper. Williams makes a jumping catch. It's going to be a tough play. Not in time. That's going to be a single for Williamson. The ground's really hard out here today. Number 16, third baseman, Jay O'Neill. Field hasn't been watered a ton. So the ground's really hard. And you can see the ground balls bouncing really high today. And that's because of the lack of water so far. Had some rain. Change up, blown away. Didn't put rain on the field much last week. Or excuse me, water, because you thought it was going to rain a lot. You don't want to rain yourself out. And then it ended up not raining so much. So ground's a little hard. I'm sure next week, pick off back in time. I'm sure when we play next, here next Saturday, it'll be a little bit softer, I'm guessing. One strike. Two batter. Baldoff scows up 0-2. Over O'Neill. O'Neill hit by a pitch. Also has an RBI. Had a good season coming in today, 291. One of the only lefties Yakima has been showing today. That fastball just off the plate. One, two count. Wouldn't be surprised if he comes with the changeup after throwing the fastball off the plate. That might have just been a setup pitch. Williamson's got his lead. He's going. Change up off the plate. And Williamson has a stolen base. Pretty easy on that one. Got a good read off. Scal, the pitcher. Nothing Mendoza could do to try to throw him out. Now he's in scoring position. 2-2 two -two count. Scal comes set. Williamson's got his lead. And ooh. Looks like he called his reset. Coach Kruger in the third base coaching box. Does not have a skull cap on. Breaking ball in there for strike three. Mendoza drops it though. Throws it to Belize through call. And Mendoza probably just wanted to um, add to his assist totals on the year. Number 18, does they hear Lee Souza? Brings up Souza. Baldwin High School in Hawaii. Two outs. Runner at second. Williamson breaking ball. Ball. Looks like Williamson with his left hand is trying to show where the pitch location is at out at second base right there. Hopefully the Wolves will notice that. They didn't do it this time, Scout. Out in front, Williams charges, makes a play, and the throw to first to retire the Yaks. And as we head to the bottom of the fourth inning, Yaks to Wolves four.
Brings up Mosey, the hitter he wants to lead off the bottom of the fourth. Shows drag. That's going to be a tough one. McDaniel makes a play. Not able to get him in time. That's going to be an infield single for Mosey. He's got that speed. All around hitter up there. Number five, third baseman, Logan Williams. Brings up Williams. I'm guessing he'll bunt as well after Mosey with the leadoff drag bunt single. McDaniels only given up two hits, but he's walked and hit several batters. Throws over to first, and that is going to be into the bullpen. Mosey's going to go all the way to third base. They're not going to have a play over there. And Mosey's does that to you. I mean, drag bunt single. Makes the pitcher pick off. Overthrow and gets to third base. So Mosey just creates havoc on the base pass. It's been a huge help for the Timberwolves this year. You gotta like those pesky runners. And McDaniel, ball hasn't gone more than 10 feet and he's already got a guy at third base. He's gonna go out of the windup and the Axe have the infield pulled in. The OO Williams. Hell on back. All right, back. So. Williams with the infield pull in. Let's see if he can get a poke through. Williams out of Legrand. McDaniel out of Meridian, Idaho. Breaking ball in there for a strike, and McDaniel's up. 0 2 in the count. Mosey at third after a bunt single, then an E1. Fastball off the plate, one and two. McDaniel out of the windup. Delivery on the way to Williams. Breaking ball just high. Evens the count at two and two. That's a good job by Williams getting the count back to even here. Yakima does have some action in the bullpen. No action in the bullpen for the Timberwolves. The 2-2 on the way for McDaniel. Breaking ball. Backdoor in there for strike three and Williams is retired for the first out. Number 24 first baseman Joaquin Velez Foucault. Brings up Velez Foucault. He's been hit several times this game by pitches. Breaking ball off the plate. Looks like three times in the double header and twice in this game. So he's got a magnet on his back. He's got the target on his back. The 1 0. Breaking ball on the outside corner for a strike. Got the lefty lefty matchup here. Usually favors the pitcher because they're able to throw their breaking balls more, and lefty hitters do not get that ton. A lot of practice off the left handed pitchers. The 1 1. Breaking ball. Swung on to miss. One two count. Should be a big out for McDaniel if he gets a strike out of least we call here. So he can keep Mosey at third with two outs. With the infield pulled in. Let's see if Valise Fakal can battle. Get something in play, or maybe get another hit by pitch. That's Flair. That's gonna be tough with the infield pulled in. And oh Ooh. out. Ooh. Ooh. I don't know if we have a catch or not. But it looks like people are hurt here. Uh, time's not called yet.
All right, welcome back here at Blue Mountain Baseball Field. Brad Baker here. Um, sad moment there. Luckily, um, he's getting transported, the second baseman, transported to St. Anthony's Hospital here. Um, he was moving all of his extremities and everything. So the run did score on that to make it a 5-2 Wolves lead. It is one of those times when you're out at the baseball field and you realize baseball is just a game and things are more important than the baseball. Oil fouls it off here, but it's in good hands now. So, Valise McCall at first base. He's the one that hit the bloop single with the infield pulled in. McDaniel on the mound. Said it's always tough to get focused back on baseball after something like that, but it also helps take your mind off it as Boyle swings at the breaking ball down 0 2. <laughs> Luckily, we had a nice Yakima Valley parent who is also a nurse. The 0 2 to Boyle. Breaking ball swung on this, and Boyle is retired for out number two. Third strikeout for McDaniel. Number three left fielder, Chance Oldham. Brings up Oldham, right fielder this game, and playing mainly left field, breaking ball just outside. McDaniel's been locating his breaking ball here pretty well. Fastball popped up to left, shallow left. Looks like the shortstop is going to make the play for the third out. And after a long bottom half of the fourth, Wolves five, Yaks two. Brings up Soe in the top half of the fifth inning here. Jace Scow on the mound for the Wolves, coming out of the pen. That might fall, but it's gonna hang up. Oldham makes a sliding play, and we got a catch. Good sliding catch there by Oldham for out number one. Number 29, first baseman, Brett Haggerty. Brings up Haggerty, he had a home run in the f first game. Scow, first pitch on the outside corner. Hit his fourth home run of the season. Big kid out of North Thurston. Breaking ball, inside, just missed. Even to count it, one and one on Haggerty. Change up, just inside, just missed the inside one. 
Home plate umpire Greg Mitchell asked first base umpire Jim Clifford if he went. He says no. Puts the count in Haggerty's favor 2 1. The 2 1 swung on a miss by Haggerty. Scow evens up the count. The 2 2 on the way. Swung on foul by it down the third base side. Bounces off the fence in, in field of play, so we'll have a slight away, delay as Romo goes and fetches the ball. Corey Elias bringing out extra baseballs to the home plate umpire. Two and two count. One out here in the top of the fifth. Each team has four hits. Change up out in front. That's going to hang up for the left fielder. Two outs. Number one shortstop, Trevin Long. Brings up Long, the shortstop. Fastball outside for a ball. Long has walked and struck out this game. Oh, hit, fastball, hit hard up the middle. Long hit that right at Scow. Those are always scary out there on the mound. He longs the board with a two-out single. Number 21, right fielder, Peyton Ricard. Brings up Ricard. Out of Mike in high school, Kenwick, Washington. Two outs, long at first. Fastball in on the inside corner for a strike. Scow is up 0-1. Long at first, decent speed. Scow comes set, picks over to first. Long's back in play time. They're a long ways away from Picking him off there. <laughs> Scow. Come set. Out of the Grand Oregon Scow. Change up. Fouled on. Tipped off Mendoza there. Scow's up 0 2. That was his change up there. His change up. Real change of pace. Dives off. Off the plate as well. He's getting the hitters out in front. And he throws it any count, any time, to any batter. So. Pretty good pitch he's got that changeup. The 0-2, fastball down low. 1-2 count. Slight breeze blown in from left field, not much though. Light windy day, the 1-2 count. And Scow picks over. Not his best move, just kind of stepped off and threw it over there lightly. Might be setting him up. Wouldn't be surprised to see Long go here with two strikes and two outs. He is running. Swung on and fouled back. Count will remain one and two. Nice day here in Pendleton. First base coach for the Axe, Gunner Hanch. Change up, flared off to left. It looks like it's gonna go foul, just slightly foul. Larkin gave chase there, but ball tailed foul. Those lefties, when they hit the ball over there to left field, it moves away farther to left. Wind could not hold it up. On a windy day, that probably would have fell fair. Let's see it. Coach Kruger sends long here again. One, two count. Scow changing his delivery. Breaking ball, fouled on back right to us. Still count will remain one and two. And they're out of balls. Corey Elias running the balls out again. 
A lot of foul balls from Ricard in this at bat. 6'1", 195 pounds. Out of Kamayakin High School. Scout comes set, one, two. Long's got a lead. Long is running. And another foul ball by Ricard. Gonna have to charge him for baseballs here. These baseballs are not cheap anymore. It's fouled off several. They're about five bucks a pop now for baseball. Usually you can recycle the foul balls, but sometimes if they hit the asphalt or the rock out there, they get a ding in them and you can't reuse them. Change up. Another foul ball. Ricard is battling up there. That's what you want to do with two strikes. Foul off those good pitcher pitches. Scout's throwing plenty of them on that outside corner there. Ricard's just fouling them off, fouling them off. Then you hope as a hitter, if Scout makes a mistake down the middle, that you're able to capitalize on it. Scout. Come set. Runners running again, and Ricard fouls it back. That one was more on the inside part of the plate. Ricard still fouls it off, and Long's getting his exercise in. It's about his third stolen base attempt in this at bat, and he has had to run back every time for a foul ball. Scout. Come set the one two. Change up. Foul long back again. About the longest set bat we've seen in a while. Still only one ball on Ricard. And Corey Elias is staying busy running baseball out. Two home plate umpire, Greg Mitchell. Still a one two count. Let's see if Ricard will put one in play here. Long. Is running. Change up. Hit to left. It looks like it's going to tail. Just foul again for another foul ball. This guy's making us get paid overtime. <laughs> He's hit seven straight foul balls. How about that? I think I wouldn't be afraid to stand the zone a little bit here. Make him chase something out of the strike zone. Maybe a fastball up at above the letters or something like that. Scout comes set. One, two, breaking ball. He hasn't thrown that. And he flares it into center field for a hit. What an at bat by Ricard. Seven straight foul balls and then a single the other way. Good at bat. Number 11, left fielder Jesse Maziotti. Brings up Masiati. First and second two outs. So after Scow gets the first two outs pretty quick, he acts have two guys on. Fastball, just low. Scow's been throwing strikes, but he's thrown a lot of pitches this inning due to the foul ball. He did have that delay out there after the injured Yakima player. Came out well, though, in this inning. Fastball flared off. Looks like Felice Foucault's got a beat on it. And he is there and settles under it for the third out of the inning. As we head to the bottom half of fifth, Yaks two, your Wolves five.
Brings up the shortstop Romo. Bottom half of the fifth inning here. McDaniel's back out at work. And there with the breaking ball for a strike. Said we had an injured Yakima player last inning. And very scary moment. Back to playing baseball here, though. We hope he is all right. He was count at one ball, one strike. Nick Daniel out of the delivery. Breaking ball in there for another strike on Romo. So McDaniel gave up two in the first two innings each. Only giving up four hits. Command's been his issue so far. Breaking ball, hit hard, but right at the shortstop long for the first out of the inning. Number eight, left fielder, Kaylin Larkin. Brings up Larkin, who's hit, hitting 355 coming into the game. Solid batting average. In a part time role. Fastball in there for a strike. He's got 31 at bats on the year. Today he's been hit by a pitch and flew out to center. The 0 1 from McDaniel. Breaking ball in there for a strike. Daniel's really fallen in love with that breaking ball recently. He's been locating it really well. See what he can do to Lark at 0 2 here. Let's see if he's going to go back to the breaking ball or mix in a fastball. Breaking ball, strike three, and Larkin is retired in three straight pitches. Number 20, catcher Christian Mendoza. Brings up the catcher Mendoza out of Austin, Texas. McDaniel, it's delivery. Fastball hit up the middle by Mendoza. It looks like it's going to fall. And it does, but it scoots away from the center fielder. Mendoza's going to round first. He's heading for second. And he is in in time for a two out single and an error. And he's in scoring position. That's the second error for Yakima, I believe, okay. on the day. Number zero, second baseman, Hunter Hollyfield. He's up Hollyfield from Meridian, Idaho, Mountain View High School. Mendoza's guys lead from second. Breaking ball up there for a strike. Mendoza did a good, great job of base running, seeing that get kicked off the center fielder. Able to get into second for scoring position. All the field ahead in the count, 1-0. McDaniels, fastball, inside, 2-0 count. Hollyfield's got a hitter's count here. You think he's gonna challenge him with Mosey on deck. Doesn't wanna face him with two guys on, so I expect fastball down the middle here for Hollyfield. Fastball, inside though, ball three. Now the Yaks have some action in the bullpen. Can't quite see who it is, but we'll let you know when we do. Fastball. In there for a strike. 3 1 count. Good hitters count for Hollyfield. Three one count. Looks like I'm guessing he's gonna get that fastball again. He does. Inside though for ball four. And the Wolves have guys on first and second for the Wolves' hottest hitter coming up. Mosey. Center fielder number 22, Davis Mosey. And time is called. Pitching coach comes up for now. Looks like Tyler McClellan is warming up in the Axe bullpen. 6'6 six, six righty out of Timberline High School. And he's coming into the game. And we don't have any stats, it looks like, on him. So, Oh, never mind. He has pitched at 17 innings with a 5.19 here. In.
Clellan on the mound in to face Mosey. Mosey has been having a day for the Wolves. Today, this game, though, he's 0 for 2 with a walk. Game 1, 3 for 4. Oh, except he does have a single this inning. He's 1 for 2, excuse me, with a bunt single. 3 for 4 game 1, so he's got 4 hits already. McCullen falls down with 1 and 0. The 1 0 in the dirt. And Mosey's going to be in a hitter's count here. Got Mendoza at second. Two out single. Hollyfield at first with a walk. McCullen has 10 walks in 17 innings and 9 hit by pitches. So. Oh, excuse me. Excuse me. Nine walks, excuse me. 19 strikeouts and 17 innings pitch. And the 3 0 count. Mosey, I'm guessing, will have the take sign. Fastball right down the middle. He's taking the whole way. Even though he's one of the hottest hitters, you don't want new pitcher coming in, can't find the zone, and Swing on a 3-0 right there when he's been wild. He's got to come to you three straight times here. Make him prove it. And 3-1. In the dirt. And another walk. Rosie walks. He's going to bring bases loaded up for Williams. Third baseman number five, Logan Williams. Brings up Williams. Breaking ball. Oh, they call the Bach. And a run will score. There's no count. In college, you got a free swing there. So if Williams swings, hits a home run, you can take the home run or you can take the Bach. So once you hear a Bach call, you want to swing no matter what. Oh, count. We'll score another one off the block. And breaking ball in the dirt. What oh, count. Kellen has only thrown one strike since entering the game. Five balls and a block. The 1 0 on the way. Hits a shortstop. That's going to be a tough play in the six hole. Long's not going to be able to make it. And that will, not sure what that will be, probably an error. Williams is aboard though. Could be a single, either way. First baseman number 24, Scores another run for the Valles, And it is scored an error. Release Foucault up to the plate as the Wolves score another one. All this happening with two outs, quite Nice little two out rally here. Wolves now up seven to two, creating some space from the X. That's just outside. Two outs, the least we call. And their change of scoring, they're going to call that a base hit for Williams. RBI single. The 1 0 on the way to the least we call. Fastball, four ball. Two O's now the count. Police with calls now got a hitter's count. McClellan has had trouble throwing strikes since he's got in here. Let's see if Elise with call can make him pay. Fastball flared off to left. That should be a routine ball. And it's caught for the third out. But the Wolves tack on another two in the bottom of the fifth. As we head to the top of the sixth, Wolves seven, Yaks two.
Brings up Karangelo to lead off the top of the sixth. Wolves separating up seven to two. Scow's done a great job coming in in relief. It's not giving up a run. Heading into his fourth inning of work out of the bullpen. Posted three zeros. First pitch is a ball. Fouled on back for a strike. Evens the count at one and one. Carangelo, the catcher, out of the Boise area. Scows 1-1, one, one. breaking ball in the dirt. Scow, like I said, is pitched straight out of, out of the bullpen, giving the Wolves uh, three zeros in a row. Defense has played well, has not made an error. Change up just low. 3-1 count. Expect Scow to challenge him here with the five-run lead. And fastball up high for a leadoff walk. Number 32, center fielder Kyle Williamson. Brings up center fielder Williamson. Scow walk the leadoff guy. If Scow can get a ground ball double play. Here he is. Slow roller to Williams. 4-1. Hollyfield on to first. And the ball was hit too slow for the double play. But the Wolves retired. The lead runner. Third baseman, number 16, Jay O'Neill. Back to the top of the lineup for the Yaks. Brings up O'Neill. One out, Williamson at first. Gets his lead. Scow picks over to first. That gets to the time pretty soon where the sun's setting, and it can be tough to pick up the ball at first base on a pickoff. Doesn't look like it's quite there yet. Scow comes set. A change up. Out in front. Scow makes the play. Oh, and he pulls Romo off the bag. Could have been a double play, but that's going to be an E on the pitcher. Just as I said, the Wolves are playing good defense. I jinxed it. Does the hitter number 18, Lee Souza. Brings up Souza. That was the first error on the Wolves. Souza brings up the number two hitter. Scout comes set. Hit hard down the left field line, but it's foul into the Wolves' bullpen. So, Scout could have had a double play there. Just pulled Romo slightly off the bag. Looks like Cam Smith is warming up in the bullpen for the Wolves. Scout's 0-1. Breaking ball in the dirt. Greg Mitchell says he went. So that will be... The second strike. 0-2, oh, the count on the batter. Souza. Souza's from Hawaii. Quite a few Hawaiians playing in this game. Scows 0-2. Oh, on the way. Breaking ball. Hit out to right. Hold on, we'll retreat, but it looks like he's in place to make the play. Williamson will tag and get to third base. So it'll be first and third with two outs. Good catch by Oldham there. Got the ball in. As the train comes up. Right pillar number seven, Matthew. Sobe. Brings up left handed Hayne Sobe out of Grandview, Washington, home of the Greyhounds. First and third here. Wolves a five run lead. See a big out for Scow if he gets out of it, holds his five run lead. Change up. Down low and away for the ball. Cam Smith warming up in the bullpen for the Wolves. 
One O is the count. Scow. Down low again. Two balls and no strikes. First and third. Don't know if he'll send them. Probably not in a hitter's count like this. And you are down five. Scow's 2 0 delivery. Change up swan and miss. He said Scow will throw that change up any count. Now you get a. Throw those change-ups if you're comfortable throwing strikes with it. 2-0, 3-1, those hitters counts. Hitters sitting fastball, they're usually out in front of that change-up if you can throw it well. The 2-1 from Scout. Sosa throws another change-up in there for a strike. Two balls and two strikes, two outs. Got the deuces. The train is going in the background. Top of the sixth inning, Wolves up five, the 2-2 pitch. From Scow. Picks off. Back in time is O'Neill. Scow will come set. O'Neill fakes the fall. Foul ball just tipped off Mendoza's glove. So Souza will have a live another life. It's home plate. Umpire Greg Mitchell. The wipe off home plate here. This train goes by. This is going to be a train's just about to end. You want to throw it while the train's still moving, so it's in the hitter's backdrop there. 2 2. Fastball swung on. Fouled back. That will still be 2 0 2. As the train goes by. It's been a pretty peaceful day here in Pendleton. Minus our injury we had here. It's been a long at bat. He acts have fouled quite a few pitches off of Scout, but he keeps battling, keeps throwing good pitches. The 2-2 on the way. Breaking ball up high. That's going to be a full count. So O'Neill will be in motion with the pitch. Looks like Loftus is thrown as well. So we've seen Cam Smith and Loftus both thrown out there. Full count. Payoff pitch. Runner will be moving. O'Neill. The payoff pitch. Change up. Hit the other way. It's going to be a tough play for Romo. He gets around it. Makes a quality throw and gets him in time for the third out. What a play by Romo. Going into the sixth hole, thrown across his body. Very nicely done. And as we head to the bottom of the sixth, Wolf seven, Yaks two. Brings up Boyle to lead off the bottom half of the sixth inning here. Off of McClellan. Fastball in there for a strike. This will be my last half inning of work before I hand it over to Brandon Martin, my broadcast partner here. The 01 from McClellan. Chopped. Looks like it's going to be foul, though, as it is. And Boyle will have to return to the batter's box.
Yeah, let's go with two on Boyle. Boyle out here from Salt Lake City, Utah area. I recruited him a long time ago. He's still with us, and we're glad he's here. Two strike approach. Dinks it up the middle. It's going to be a tough play, though. And he's saved. Not get him in time. Shortstop kind of hung back there. Boyle hustled down the line, and Boyle is aboard with a leadoff infield single. Right fielder number three, Chance Oldham. Brings up Oldham. Good piece of two-strike hitting there by Boyle. So you always want to instruct it. Put something in play with two strikes. You never know what happened. Oldham shows bunt. Pulls back, though. He did call the strike on the attempt, though. As the catcher back picks. So no balls in one strike. Let's see if Coach Benson will put on the bunt sign again here. Or maybe steal with Boyle. Oldham. Swing it away. Swings and misses. So Olam is quickly down 0-2 to McCullum. Now let's see if Olam can do a nice piece of two-strike hitting like Boyle. McCullum comes set, Boyle with his lead. Off the plate with the breaking ball. Olam out of Kennewick, Washington. Kennewick High School, home of the Lions. Boom. Comes set. The one two. Swung on and missed by Oldham. Oldham is retired. Short stop, number nine, Yoa Romo. Brings up Romo with one out. The shortstop who ended the axe last half inning with a good play in the shallow six hole. He's going to show bunt, pops it up, and the catcher could not quite grab it with his bare hand. One strike on the batter, Romo. Romo, like I said, playing some great defense here, making some good plays in the six hole. It's always tough to find shortstops sometimes at this level can, that can make those six hole plays consistently. Hard throw, you're working away from your body. But Romo was able to make those plays. Helen comes set. The 0 1. Breaking ball off the plate. Evens count at 1 1. Getting a new ball here. Not sure what was wrong with that. Must have wiped to his mouth or his nose. Just going to throw the booger ball. The 1 1 count. McCullen swung on a miss by Romo. Bring the count to 1 and 2. Third base umpire Rick Freitas. Someone who noticed that. 1 2 count from McCullen to Romo. Hit the other way. Looks like the right fielder's got to play on it to retire the second out. Left fielder, number eight, Kaylin Larkin. Brings up Larkin, the left fielder. Left-handed. Swinging outfielder out of Las Vegas, Nevada. Now he has been facing a lefty all game, so I'm sure he's excited to see the right-handed pitcher McClellan here. Fastball swung on a miss for strike one. Took a good hack at it. Just missed. Larkin struck out in his last at bat. Also been hit by a pitch and flown out to center. Boyle still at first base. Fastball swung on a miss. Strike two. Boyle was on leadoff infield single, but he's stayed there so far with two outs. McClellan's fastball hit the other way by Larkin. That looks like it's going to fall in front of the left fielder for a two-out single, and the Wolves have two runners on with two outs. Two 
Catcher number 20, Christian Mendoza. Brings up the catcher Mendoza with two outs. Wolves have Boyle at second, Larkin at first, both aboard via singles. Brings up Mendoza who had a single up the middle last time. Fastball off to right. It's going to stay in play, but just out of the reach of the first baseman. It's got the 0 1 count here. As the runners get back, McKillen is throwing a lot better this inning than the last inning. His command's a lot better this inning. Foul ball in the box. It will be 0 and 2 on Mendoza. Sometimes it's tough coming in mid inning. Sometimes you, it's a lot easier to start with a fresh inning. McClellan's settled down with his fresh inning here. They throw throwing well this inning. 0 2. Fastball off the plate. Looks like that was a show me fastball off the plate. Let's see if he comes back with a breaking ball here. McClellan, high strikeouts, high walk. Throws really pretty firm. The one two on the way. Breaking ball, swung on and missed by Mendoza. And the Wolves are retired after two singles. As we head to the top of the seventh, Wolves seven, Yax two. Brad Morn with you on this one, filling in for Brad Baker. We get to start the top of the seventh, though. A Timberwolves leading 7 2 here. It's a high fly ball, and that is going to be foul. So, going to be Cameron Smith on the mound, though, for the Timberwolves. Coming to us from Bend, Oregon. And the 0 1 offering from Smith. Down low in the dirt for a ball. It's going to be even the count, though, at one and one. On to Haggerty. Flyed out last time, though. He had a strikeout and also a line out. That is going to be low. Going to be two balls and one strike. And going to be Smith. The 2 1 on the way. Swing and a miss. 
It's going to be now at two balls and two strikes. On to Haggerty. As Cameron Smith looking for the strikeout to start off this inning. The 2 2 pitch from Smith to Haggerty. And the 2 2 on the way. Down low in the dirt for a ball. Now full count at three balls and two strikes on to Haggerty. And here is the payoff pitch by Smith to Haggerty. The 3 2 on the way. That is going to be line right up the middle into center field for a base hit. That is going to be a leadoff single for Brett Haggerty. Shortstop number one, Trevin Long. It's going to be Trevin Long. Couple singles last. He had a single last time. Two for two, which is all in singles. First offering is going to be down low in the dirt, though. As Long backed away on that one, that's going to be a ball. Making a ball and no strikes on the Trevin Long. And here is the 1 0 offering from Smith to Long. As a high fly ball, and that's right up the gap, and that is to right left center field for a base hit. And Romo can get there, and he is safe, though. That is going to be a double for Trevin Long. Three for three on the day for him. Second baseman, number 21, Peyton Ricard. It is going to be Peyton Ricard, though. A single last time. And currently one for two on the day for him. He had a hit by pitch RBI. He blew out. Runners up for second and third. That is going to be low and inside for a ball. Going to be one ball and no strikes on a Ricard. Haggerty in this one at third, long at second. Now low in the dirt, but great block that time by Mendoza. Going to be making the two balls and no strikes on to, to Ricard. And we take a look at the other scores in this one. As Wenatchee Valley Bean, as mentioned, Big Ben to the one. Swing and a miss. And it's going to be a strike, though. Making it two balls and a strike on Ricard. And it finished up in the 6 6 tie between Treasure Valley and Walla Walla. That is going to be live over Holland Field. As Haggerty will come home. And it's now the Yaps cutting the Timberwolf lead down to four. Now a 7 3 Timberwolves lead. Continuing for the Yaps, number three, Tyler Bugby. It will be pitching, which is Tyler Bugby. As we uh, saw him earlier in this one, lined out, filling in for Finney. Hopefully, uh, Travis Finney is going to be okay, though. After that collision earlier in this one between the second baseman Finney and the center fielder in, in, in Williamson. Williamson was all right. Hopefully... With Travis Finney, he's gonna hopefully he's gonna be okay. So our thoughts and prayers goes out to Travis Finney. And that first offering is gonna be inside low for a ball. Gonna be a ball and no strikes on to Tyler Bugby. We'll come in for Maziati. Runners at the corners though with nobody out. It is going to be low and away there for a ball. Now two balls and no strikes. 
And it looks like time is called, though, as going to be Tyson Wicklander in this one. And while they're going to have the, uh, the mound visit by Tyson Wicklander, as in this one with with Hills Meats, which is our BMCC Athletics, we'd like to thank our platinum sponsor, Hills Meats, located in Pelton, Oregon, bringing you the best quality meats around. Check out Hills Meats, located at 1503 Northwest 50th Street, Pendleton, Oregon, which is a platinum sponsor of BMCC Athletics. And the mound visit of Tyson Wicklander is done. So we use the mound visit, so we'll go ahead and continue play in this one. Two balls, no strikes on the bug B. And here is the, it's going to be a pickoff attempt though. And it's going to be Ricard though, be back in time. Ricard with the RBI single. Next offering is inside four ball. Now at three balls and no strikes. So on to Bugby. Cameron Smith's gonna have to find his command somehow and find the strike zone. And it's going to be a four pitch walk on to Bugby. And looks like Derek Benson has seen enough of Cameron Smith. And it looks like he is going to be done for the day going into this evening. And we'll bring in Rocco Loftus as we'll talk more about Rocco Loftus when we come back as we'll keep you right here. Rocco Loftus coming in for the Timberwolves out of Oregon City, Oregon. Left-handed pitcher. Bases are loaded. Nobody out. First offering. High fly ball to left. And that is going to camp it underneath. That is going to be caught, though, by Larkin. A run does come in, though. It's now the Wolves 7 and the Yaks 4. Center fielder number 32, Kyle Williamson. It's going to be Kyle Williamson. Williamson on the fielder's choice last time. And it's going to be a bunt, though. Loftus, no throw. So that's going to be a bunt single for Williamson. Number 16, third baseman, Jay O'Neill. It's going to be Jay O'Neill. Reached on the air last time. Apparently one for three, though, with an RBI single. 
That is going to be inside, though, for a ball. Taking it, one ball and no strikes. And here is the 1 0 offering. Low for a ball. Two balls and no strikes, though. On to O'Neill. Here is the 2 0 on the way. Hopped high on that one to the left. And it is going to be caught that time. Holy cow. And he got that one by Rombo for the second out. Because they have number 18, Lee Souza. It's going to be Souza. Apparently in this one, one for two in this. A sack fly last time. One ball, and it's going to be a ball though, as mentioned. Again, the ball and no strike, so on Sousa. Aces are still loaded. That is going to be just high on that one, and outside for a ball. Now at two balls and no strikes. And Loftus is ready. Here is the 2-0 on the way. Swing and a miss. Now it's going to be a two balls and one strike, though, on to Souza. And Loftus is set. The 2-1 offering to Souza. Down low in the dirt, though, for a ball. Now making it three balls in the strike, though, on to Lee Souza. As Loftus is trying to find his command, though, got to have to find in the strike zone. Or else it's going to be a walk RBI, though, on to Souza. And the Axe will cut the lead, the Timberwolf lead down even further. And the 3 1 offering. High fly ball to right to left center field. That is going to be caught though by the center fielder Mosey for the third out. However, they do put up two runs on the board though. They leave the runners at bases loaded as the Timberwolves seven and the uh, Yaks four. We go to the bottom of the seventh, though. It is a 7 4 Timberwolf lead. And it'll start off low and inside for a strike. Making it no balls and a strike, though, on Hall of Field. Walked last time. Swing and a miss on that one. Down 0 and 2 on Hall of Field. The leadoff hit hitters coming up, though. Back to the top of the lineup. Go to low for a ball. Now at one ball and two strikes. On to Hall of Field. And here is McClellan, the one two. Outside low for a ball. And he evens the count at two balls and two strikes. On to Hall of Field. As McClellan is set, the two two offering. 
That is going to be the blooper foul right into the Yaks bullpen. Remains at two balls and two strikes so on the hall of field. Going to have a little bit of time called there by home plate umpire Greg Mitchell. Going to have Elias giving the baseballs once again to as mentioned, home plate umpire Greg Mitchell. Remains two balls and two strikes, so on the hall of field. The 2 2 offering. Foul off and out of play. And hall of field will keep the at bat going from there. Still at 2 and 2. The 2 2 on the way by McClellan. Outside for ball. Full count now at three balls and two strikes. So on to Hall of Field. And here's the payoff pitch by McClellan. Swing and a miss. Got him. So strikeout number three for McClellan. So it's one down. Number 22, center fielder, Davis Mosey. It's going to be Davis Mosey. Walked on last time. And so far, currently still one for two on the day for him. The 1-0 offering by McClellan. Little chopper to the second base. It'll be safe on that one. That is going to be infield single for Davis Mosey. He is two for three on the day. Number five, third baseman, Logan Williams. It's going to be Logan Williams. RBI single last time. Down low in the dirt for ball to start off on the Williams. Currently in this one, two for three on the day for him. Do an outstanding job in this one. Here is the 1 0 offering from McClellan. Mosey's going to attempt to steal second. He is safe on that one. Now make it number 23 for Mosey. He is just two more stolen bases away from tying the leader, which is Hermanson of Centralia, for the leader in NWAC stolen bases. Next offering popped up and out of play, foul. And it's a one ball and a two strike, so on to Williams. Mosey is at scoring position, though, with one out, one two offering. Ooh, look out on that one. As uh, Williams shaking it off on that one, it was just jammed inside there. Two balls and two strikes, so on Williams. The 2-2 two -two offering. Just a little high on that one for a ball. Making a full count at three balls and two strikes. And here is McClellan, the payoff pitch to Williams. And the 3-2 on the way. Just foul on that one. Got a piece of that by Williams. Still remains a full count. Three balls and two strikes. Mosey extending his lead at second. The payoff pitch by McClellan. This is going to be a strike three call, but no throw that time. Mosey will move up to third. Now make it number 24. Just one away from the leader in this one. Number 24, first baseman Joaquin Velez call. It is Joaquin Velez Bucal. Low in the dirt for a ball. One ball, no strikes. Popped up last time. The 1 0 offering. Lines it to the first baseman in Haggerty for the third out. They do leave the runner at third, though, as the Timberwolves 7 and the Yaks 4.
We go to the top of the eighth, though. Timberwolves still holding on to a 7-4 lead over the Yaks. And it's going to be Matthew Sove. Lock this going in for another inning. Four pitching in this one. And foul back behind the fencing. No balls on the strike, though, on the Sove. And lock this, the 0 1 on the way. Low in the dirt, though, for a ball. Now evens the count, though, at 1 and 1. And the 1 1 on the way by Loftus. Making it one ball and no strikes. On to Haggerty. 1 0 offering. Low and away for a ball, making it two balls and no strikes. On to Haggerty. 2 0 on the way. Outside for a ball. Make it three balls, no strikes. Loftus, you're going to have to find a way there to find the strike zone. 3 0. And it's going to be a four pitch walk on Haggerty. And Haggerty will now go to first. Number one, shortstop, Trevin Long. It's going to be Trevin Long. Long doubled last time. First pitch offering is high and away there for a ball. They get one ball and no strikes, though, on to Trevin Long. Currently three for three on the day, doing an outstanding job here in this second game. The up next offering is outside. Four ball. Two balls, no strikes. On to Long. And he's going to have a little bit of a time call there by the capture of Christian Mendoza. Giving him some confidence in this one to Rocco Loftus. Got to calm down. We're still up by three. In the top eight, though, you got one out. At least in this one, I would say. Go for a double play in this one. That would be your best bet regarding to defensively for the Timberwolves. But if you're the Yaks case in this one, at least go for a base hit. At least have the opportunity to have some runners to get at least to get closer to cutting the lead down on the Timberwolves. 2-0 on the way. And it's going to be outside though for a ball. Now at three balls, no strike, so on long. And again, losing his command already, the 3-0 offering. And another four-pitch walk by Loftus. So back-to-back -back walks by Loftus as Long will go to first, so as Haggerty will move up to second. Second baseman number 21, Peyton Ricard. It's going to be Peyton Ricard. Runners is at first and second with one out. 7-4 game. High and in for a ball. One ball and no strikes though on to Ricard. RBI single last time. He also had a single earlier. Two for three on the day for him. 1 0 offering. That's in for a strike, though, in the inside corner. Even the count at 1 and 1. Now, Loft is finding the rhythm in his pitching, pitching repertoire. 1 1 on the way. Nod. That's a fair ball, though. That's going to be a base hit. Haggerty will come home at. And Long will stick around. That is going to be an RBI double for Ricard. As the Yaks cut the lead, the Timberwolf lead down the two, now making a 7 5 game. Looks like Loftus is going to be done for the day as Derek Besson hands the baseball, as Loftus hands the baseball too, as we're going to have. A new pitcher in this one, as we'll talk to that pitcher. We'll keep you right here for this one when we come right back.
It's going to make Tyler bug me in this one. Bug me walked last time. And for a strike and bring in Nathan B in this one. Coming to us from Meridian, Idaho, Mountain View High School. Red shirt sophomore this year. Her next offering is high, though, for a ball. Making it an even count at one and one. For beat there, he, again, he had a, he had a red shirt last year because of that elbow. His elbow had a stress fracture on that one. A little grounded foul, though, along the first base side. One ball and two strikes, so on to Bugby. And he basically did stats up in this booth, though, last year. His pitching repertoire it has a four seam fastball, two seamer, a change, a slider, and a curveball. Round it and we'll throw to home. How do you? out at home! So he'll be reached on a fielder's choice, though. Bye, Bugby. So let's do that. Number two, catcher Vinny Carangella. Maybe Vinny Carangella. A sack fly RBI last time. Currently 0 for 1 in this one. Runners at the corners. You got the. That's going to be it for a strike. Inside the zone. At, this is no balls in the strike. Runners at the corners, though, as you got the tying run at first, though. And here is the 0 1 offering. Him for a strike. Inside corner, low. Making it no balls and two strikes on the. Karangella. And here is the 0 2 pitch by Beef to Karangella. And the 0 2 on the way. Foul back. Oh, look out on that one as home plate umpire Greg Mitchell just had a. did a flinch on that one. Holy Toledo. Just making sure he was out of the way on that one. Still remains no balls, two strikes. On to Karangella. The 0 2 offering. Just inside high for a ball. One ball, two strikes. On to Karangella. And here is the 1 2 pitch by Beef to Karangella. Inside low for a ball. Now make that two balls and two strikes. On to Karangella. And here is B trying to find the strike to get out of the inning. Here is the 2 2 pitch by B to Garangella. Strike right, three call. We'll go ahead and have a punch out though as Mendoza throws it to the left. We call and gets the out. So strike out number one for Nathan B. Did you leave the runners at the corners though? And, and they do get a run as. The Timberwolves 7 and the Yaks 5.
We go to the bottom of the eighth though in this one as the Yaks cut the Timberwolf lead down to two, making a 7-5 game. That is going to be low and in for a strike onto the outside corner. Making it no balls and a strike though on the Boyle. Single last time for Boyle. Currently one for two on the day for him. The old one offering. It's in for a strike right on the top of the outside corner on that one. Now making it no balls and two strikes on to Boyle. It's going to be Tyler Dish. Going to be on the mound now. And a swing and a miss on that one. So it's going to be strikeout number one for Tyler Dish. Right fielder number three, Chance Oldham. It's going to be Chance Oldham. It's going to be a strike though. And strike out last time by Oldham. And the 0 on offering. Low in the dirt though for a ball. Now mix it even. It's going to be even count at one and one. And Dish is looking to find the strike zone. Here's the 1 1 offering. In for a strike with a fastball. And here is going to be the 1 2 pitch by Dish to Oldham. 1 2 on the way. And he went on that one. He, he actually he did not, said first base umpire Jim Clipper. So it's going to be two balls and two strikes, though. And here is the 2 2 pitch by Dish to Oldham. Low on that one for a ball. Full count now at three balls and two strikes on to Oldham. The payoff pitch by Dish to Oldham. And a 3 2 on the way. Grounded foul. On that one, remains at three balls and three and two strikes, so by on Oldham. Again, the payoff pitch by Dish to Oldham. The three, two on the way. High fly ball to left center field, and that is going to be campering. That's going to be caught by the center fielder, Williamson, for the second out. Shorts up number nine, Yoel Romo. It's gonna be Yoel Romo. Foul back behind the fencing. It is at no balls of the strike though on the Romo. And he flied out last time though. Currently 0 for 4 on the day for him. And and for Dish. Hopefully, will be grounded to the shortstop. Can't make the play, and that is going to go down as an error. On the shortstop there. I mean, he had it, but he couldn't make the play. But fielder number eight, Kalen Larkin. So, Romo will reach on an error. A little grounder, and that is going to be... Can't make the play. That is going to be out, though, at second. But that will retire the side. And they'll do go down in short order, though. Last chance for the Axe, though, as we got the Timberwolves 7 and the Axe 5.
Last chance opportunity for the Yaks, though, is 7 5 lead by the Timberwolves, up 5 2 in this one. And a little bit of a slight change on the Timberwolves defense. Maybe Durapon will be at right now. And, we'll, and it's going to be a ball vote, making it two balls and no strikes. Here's the 2 0 offering. Swing and a miss. Two, now making it two balls and a strike, though, on to Williamson. Single last time, though, currently two for three on the day for him. It's up high, though, for the next offering is going to be a ball. Three balls and one strike. And here is the 3 1 offering. And it will be a walk, though, by Williamson. Third baseman, number 16, Jay O'Neill. It's going to be Jay O'Neill. Got Williamson at first, nobody out. And going to be Mendoza grabbing the baseball, though. But thankfully, nobody moved on that one. So, it's going to be a ball, though. And the 1-0 offering by B. Round it, Beep will throw it, and then uh, we'll get it, and two, a double play! Two down now! Jose Hitter, number 18, Lee Souza. And Souza, final chance for the Yaks. For this evening, and that's gonna be a strike though. Now at no balls and a strike though on to Souza. If Timberwolves gets this win, they'll go to six in a row. Next offerings outside for a ball. Here is the next all. one low for a ball. And it's going to be two balls there and a strike though on to Souza. Here is the two one on the way. And it's going to be fouled out of play there going into the prison parking lot. And it's down to their last strike by Souza and those yaks. And here is the 2 2 pitch by Beep to Souza. Grounded foul, though. Right almost into the Timberwolves dugout. And they'll have the momentum. And we'll be back here on a week from this coming Saturday against the Spokane Sasquatch. The 2 2 pitch. Up high for a ball. Full count now, three balls and two strikes on to Souza. And here is the payoff pitch by Beef to Souza. The three two on the way. Swing and the bus, he got him! And the Timberwolves have now won six in a row! And with that, sweeps here in Pendleton with the final score of seven to five. And next broadcast, we'll be bringing you back here this, a week from this Saturday, we'll face the Spokane Sasquatch to wrap up the four, to wrap up the four game series. To start this one off, as thank you all for joining us the, for the double air series against the Yakima Valley Yaks. Statistician for today's game is Will Mulek. Game day music provided by Kira Jacobson. And live stream production by Thomas Rudolph, Jordan Hilmick, and Donovan Rayleigh. Our commentary team was Brad Baker, 